Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. The greatest fans on earth. It's a bold statement, but would you expect anything less from Philadelphia? 58 years of heartache creates a toughness, a grit, a resolve not found in most. Sure, our prayers were answered, but now that we've had a taste, we're looking for more. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Following the biggest off-season of moves and acquisitions by General Manager Howie Roseman, the expectations of this city have never been higher. Welcome to the 2022 Panla Hockey Postgame Show on 6ABC.com and across the Jacob Sports YouTube channel, exclusively presented by Panla Hockey Giordano. Live from the Gallery Bar. Booking games inside Ocean Casino Resort. Let's get this post-game show underway. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Pond La Hockey Eagles post-game show. Uh, to say that fans and all of us are gutted would be an understatement. Um, a very shocking development here as the Eagles lose the game 38 to 35 a game they look to have in control and uh, it just did not work out for the Eagles today as they allow Patrick Mahomes to get off the mat it looked like he was down and out he comes back and the Kansas City Chiefs get four possessions score on all of them with three touchdowns uh, and the guys I get you know I don't know what to say I'm like Mr. Nelly since Derek Gunn and Seth Joyner, um, I'm stunned right now. I, I really am. And uh, I, you got to look at the Eagles' defense uh, that let them down in the second half. They look to have the game under control with a 24 to 14 halftime lead, and really never got the offense going in the second half. And their defense allowed a quarterback who looked like he was finished to come back and win the game. Man, there's no way Patrick Mahomes was that hurt. When you looked at how he was grimacing after he got that ankle twisted near the first half. We're both sitting there going, I don't think he's coming back in the second half, man. But he played on that gimpy ankle against Cincinnati. He made big plays with his legs and his arms against Cincinnati. He turns around and does the same thing in this game. But, Seth, the biggest turning point for me is this. Kansas City, with their young secondary, they played man coverage all game. They took their lumps. They got beat. They took their lumps. I don't know what Jonathan Gannon was doing with this because in the second half in particular, you know what this reminded me of? 2018, when Jim Schwartz's defensive backs were leaving receivers wide open in the field, same thing happens in this game. The difference is this time they couldn't recover from this. I don't know. You got pro bowlers all over that defense in the backfield, and you're giving these guys that much respect. There was no Tyreek Hill on this field. We're talking about Juju Smith-Schuster, McKinnon. Okay, Valdez Scanning, decent receivers, Kadaris Tony, not burners, and he's giving these guys this kind of cushion. And then you saw DBs nowhere near receivers, I, man. I really feel bad for I really feel bad for these th these these players. I really do. Um, because this is a golden opportunity that just got wasted. It really got wasted in the second half of this football game. Nick Sirianni and his staff literally got out coached. No question. You know, and everyone all season long wanted to jump on the fact that I talked about pressure and I talked about bringing some blitzes every once in a while. You know, the, 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 the thing about blitzing is you can't not do it and say it's not part of our DNA right. and then right. get in the game and then do it. Because what winds up happening is Every time that they ran a blitz today, 
they got hurt by it. Right. And they didn't get hurt by it because, you know, they failed to get there. They got hurt by it because the technique was, was flawed. Yep. The same exact play that Darius Slay got beat by, you know, worrying about the motion going across the formation is the same exact play on the other side that um, Avante Maddox got beat on. Right. Now, when right. you man to man, when you man to man, that's your man. Yes. Okay? When they motion to bunch, you're conversating with the guy next to you about your combo coverage. But to drop coverage on guys both times like that, you know, and then, you know, you, you, you got Patrick Mahomes that can't move and you never heat him up. You know, you know that Andy Reid has had problems. You know, they, they only rush for 39 yards in their entire first half. And they come out, what's the MO? What are they going to do? They're going to come out, they're going to try to establish the running game because if they can establish the running game, then that's going to open up the passing game. It's exactly what happened. They had no answer yeah. for Pacheco. Yeah. The only guy that, that seemed like he wanted to put a stop to what Pacheco was doing, you know, was Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. I mean, he came down hill and he laid some lumber on him. What happened to the offense in the second half? I mean, uh, yeah, they, the they got, they got really bad. docile. That's, and that's, that's that's let's go. Let's backtrack what, what happened here because the Eagles had, had a 27 a 21 uh, lead. And in the fourth quarter, the Chiefs got a tremendous drive right down the field, a very lack of aggression on, on the Eagles' defense. And that was the play you're talking about where they had the, the, the half motion and, and head back the other way where Slay gets beat and Tony gets the touchdown. That gives the, the Chiefs their first lead of the game. And then. The, the crippler happens next with the, the Eagles punt. It was a low punt, and Kadarius Tony takes it uh, kind of off his shoe tops and goes at 65-yard return, which leads to that touchdown, 35-27. Now, just like thunder that we didn't expect. All of a, the Eagles had the game in control. All of a sudden, they, they didn't have the game in control. Like Seth said, Eagles coaching staff got out Fox out coached in that second half. My biggest, the thing that really sticks in my craw is, how much respect the Darius Slaves, the James Bradbury, the C.J. Gardner Johnson, the Avante Maddoxes were paying these receivers that kind of respect. There was too much open space between receivers and the ball getting caught in the second Listen, half. So you, want, you want to know what the equalizer is? The equalizer is, and this is why I talk about pressure being a big part of what you do defensively. You are going to have games where you're just not going to get home. Yes. And you got to be creative enough to bring some different things to be able to get home. Yes. How many times did they sack Patrick Mahomes today? How many no. times was Patrick Mahomes under duress? Okay. Maybe six. So Maybe. if you if, if if that's the way the game is going, then you have to turn up your blitz package in situations that warrants and allows you to come after the quarterback. Okay. You know, I, 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 you, you can't blame the coverage. Because I think they played coverage the same way they played coverage all year long. The difference today was they didn't get five or six sacks in this game. No. Because they couldn't come anywhere close to Patrick Mahomes. And the, and, and the, the Foxy thing, you talk about being out Fox, okay? They killed you with Travis Kelsey in the first half. Yes. And then they came back and they killed you with Juju smith shoots Yes. And Kadarius, Kadarius Tony, Tony yes. in the second half. And you had no adjustment in the second half and you had no answer in the first half as they kept it close with Travis Kelsey. I mean, I, we talked about it in the pregame, D-Gun. What are the multiple ways that you're going to be able to stop Kelsey? You cannot just you, you cannot no. landmark drop no. in the no. National Football League no. anymore no. and think that you're going to stop these tight ends that are getting free releases and, they, and these routes are designed to pull you one way so that they can hit you know, the zone where, where you vacate. No, you got to understand numbers. If I'm T.J. Edwards and I got three receivers to my side and I drop into my zone, I don't care what combination they run. Whoever the, the, the receiver that comes to me, whether it's a tight end, whether it's a running back, whether it's a wide receiver, you have to relate to that guy in zone coverage. And if you don't relate to him, he's just running – Hog wild through, through your defense, and that's exactly what happened in the first half. There was a lot of times in that second half, Kansas City was in max protection on offense. They were running one- and two-man routes and still got seven, eight yards cushion. They were picking them apart. There was The, the guys were able to turn up the field, go five, six, seven yards before somebody came up and hit them, Seth. Look at the young DBs on Kansas City. 
the entire game coming up playing press coverage, right? Did, am I right or wrong? You know, you're right. I mean, okay. but, but listen. And they took their lumps, right? But they kept playing it. d -Gun, They kept that's, playing it. That's the mindset of an aggressive-minded defensive coordinator. When you have a passive-minded defensive coordinator, yes. okay, and you get in a situation where you don't get the pressure like you used to, like you like the like the league leading defensive line has done all year long. This is the result because now you're you're so adverse and you're so afraid to bring the extra guy because you got to play man coverage. If there was, yeah. if, listen, Mike, if there was ever a team to play man coverage against, yes, it's this one. Exactly. Okay, because yeah. the only guy you got to worry about is Travis Kelsey. Yeah, you're right. And yeah, now you can you can double him and yeah. man everybody else. Yes. Funny, we, he the one time he. He picks the, to blitz is, is the third and goal play where they blitz and, and Mahomes outfoxed them and he's got Sky Moore out there because Maddox Maddox didn't follow his responsibility and you know that 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 turned out to be a, like a key monster play there because they had him at third down and uh, and they got aggressive there and it backfired on him uh, as opposed to being aggressive uh, uh, all second half. No, see, I don't but, believe I don't believe it backfired on him. You know, it backfired on on in the sense that they scored. People are so less aggressive, uh, aggressively adverse. You want to know why? Because when players make dumb plays like that and they forget their responsibility, it's just like, you know, it, if that's my guy, that's my guy. I don't give a damn what's going on. What kind of motion you give me, no matter what kind of shifting he gives me, that's your guy. There's no excuse in zero coverage. You know that there's nobody else to cover you and no one else to pick you up, okay? So your eyes should be on that guy and that guy only. Yeah, and Maddox didn't have his eye uh, on the, the proper guy. He's looking in the backfield yeah, 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 on a motion. You know, it was the same exact mistake that Slay made. All right, so let's, let's give the Eagles a little credit here because after that happened, they, they come back and they tie the game. They get a bomb to Devontae Smith. Uh, and it, it looked like they were okay. So this is where the defense now lets them down. The Chiefs have the final drive. you got to be able to stop them on that drive. Instead, they give up uh, a third and one to Pacheco on a sweep, and that was the play C.J. Gunner Johnson made the tackle on it, would have gone for, for more. And then he had to allow Mahomes to scramble. You know, he Olympic quarterback, he scrambles for 26 yards, which push him in that situation. And then McKinnon, D, was smart enough not to score that touchdown. The Eagles wanted him to score so they can get the ball back. He goes down at the one, and that allowed him to set, out, uh, set up that game-winning field goal. The best play of the game was McKinnon, who could have walked into the end zone and sat down at the two-yard line. Great heads-up play by McKinnon because I believe Kansas City realized if we give the ball back to the Eagles, they were going to walk right back down the field and, tie, and possibly go for two and get it. But you know what? McKinnon – was a heads-up play on that particular run. You're thinking, here we go, touchdown. He he gone, they down. talked about that in the end zone. Of course I, they I, do. I've been, of course I, they I, do. I've been involved in one of those before. We're playing the Broncos in Super Bowl 32. We were instructed, let Terrell Davis walk in the end zone yes. so we can get the ball back. I remember that game. Okay? So now, it, it's been out there. It's documented. You know, I don't want to give the guy a whole bunch of credit, but Patrick Mahomes probably told him, hey, if, if they're probably going to try to let you score, slide and get down. But, I mean, at the end of the day, this this – and I feel bad for this city, and I feel bad for this for, for, for these for these young players. Yes, and I feel bad for the Philadelphia Eagles fans, man, because you could almost taste this. You could taste it. They were that close, man. Yeah, they were that close. It, it, it's a devastating loss, and I did not expect the Eagles' defense to let down like they did in the second half. I, you know, when I when I saw Mahomes in the first half, I said, "Well, this is going to be fairly easy money here," because uh, it looked like he was kind of cooked. Uh, and they they allowed him uh, off the mat. His completion percentage in the second half was close to eighty percent in the second half. That's and, that's and, disgusting. And it is disgusting. disgusting. And, and again, uh, to Seth's point, you have to adjust to that. You, you got to get a little more aggressive on a guy like that who's got a bum ankle. You just can't let him throw the ball around the field. He looked as comfortable as any time this season in that second half. <laughs> well, I, I mean, again, you know, to D Gun's point. You know, you got four rookies playing at times in your defensive backfield. Yes. They got up in our guy's face, and they challenged him at the line of scrimmage with single high safety all day long. They come, came with blitzes. They played man across the board. They were like, you know, this is how we're going to play. 
And then, you know, you got the Eagles, conversely, playing against the best quarterback in the National Football League. Yes. And we're going to sit back in the damn zone all game long and just let him pick you apart and move the chains bit by bit. You know what? Kudos to Spagnola for how he coached these young guys up. Because throughout the course of this season, they used four rookies on the back end and like six to eight rookies throughout their defense, okay? With rookie cornerbacks, what would you do? Hey, you know what, play a little bit because you're playing afraid because you don't want them to be embarrassed, right? Or you don't want them to get exposed and kill their confidence. Not Spagnola. No. He talked these dudes up. You know what? That man puts on a uniform just like you. You go up there, and if you get beat, you get beat. You know what? You come back and you play. I'm sitting there watching this, Seth. The whole game they're playing press coverage, they don't back out of it at all. D-Gun on the pass to A.J. Brown. You saw Steve Spagnuolo on the sideline. He just threw his hands over. Yes. Oh, well, they got us. So what? They got us. We're coming back. Well, that's not going to stop us. It's not going to deter no. us from no. playing the way that we play. No. You know, uh, if they had a weakness this year, it was that they didn't stop the run. And uh, they allowed the Chiefs to rush for 158 yards in this game. Um, and Mahomes had 44 of them. But, you know, Pacheco ran hard. They got some rushes from McKinnon. Uh, conversely, uh, you, know, you look at the Eagles, and uh, Jalen Hurts accounted for 374 yards on his own. Uh, but I, I don't think, like, they, they didn't the, – the stats will say that they re rushed for 115 yards, but it didn't look like they controlled the, the, the running game like they had all season. Did I miss something there? No, no, no. you talking no. about the Eagles? Yes. Listen, they gave up 119 yards in the second half alone. Yes. Because if you go back and you look at the first two series, the, the Chiefs scored. I'm trying to think. I know they scored the first three series, three touchdowns, the first three series in yeah. the second half. Yeah, they scored on four three possessions three in the second half. Yeah. And most of, their run, most of their plays were running plays. 119 yards in one half of football after only yielding 39 yards. See, so in post game, what did I tell you, D Gun? I said if they figure out a way yes. to establish the running game, right? Then what's going to wind up happening is it will open up the rest of the playbook. Okay. So well, they what, did that in the second half. That's how they started out. No doubt they, about they, it. They, they got they got the touchdown based on their running game, and again, the Eagles didn't stop them. The Eagles didn't stop the run, and that was one of the things they had problems with this year. A good running team. I didn't think it was going to be this team. That, that random ball on them, but as soon as they got that touchdown in their first possession of the second half, it, it looked like they took control of the game completely, and I just didn't expect it. That's why this loss is so devastating. The Eagles had control of this game, and, and they had a gimpy quarterback, and I, they just let them off the hook. I don't understand why the Eagles played as, as much four-man front as they did instead of going to more five-man front. Well, because every time you're in a five-man front, you're at a deficit as far as the passing game is concerned. And I, I, I couldn't see enough to tell you whether they were doubling Kelsey and taking him away in the second half, and then what they what Patrick Mahomes had to do was actually go to, you know, these secondary guys. But what, what Jonathan Gannon likes to do is he likes to run the football. He likes to run the football. He, I mean, he likes to be in his five-man look on first down and sometimes second down, especially like if they stone you on first down and it's second and eight, second and nine or more, well, yeah, they're going to stay in their five-man front, you know, because now they got all the things that you can mix in there. You got Hassan Reddick that you can bring with a five-man rush. You got Hassan Reddick that you can drop in the zone coverage. So now you can still get to your four-man look even if you want to go zone coverage. But anytime you see him in five, you see them in five a lot. They're at a deficit on the back end as far as what they can do. Okay, then it goes back to what I said earlier. If you're going to play four man front, you got more men back in coverage. What the heck was the coverage? Where's the coverage? You got more people dropping back in coverage, yeah. but nobody's covering anybody. Because you had they, guys arguing. At one point, Seth, there were got Eagles on the back end arguing amongst each other. Well, because it's the it's the it's the simple things. It's the simple things in football to get you beat when you get to this level. Okay, so you had Avante Maddox one time. He jumps a short route, and they hit a route behind him. Anytime you're in zone coverage, you always play from deep to short. So you always try to take away the deep route, and then what you try to do is you try to come up, and you stop, you know, the, you, you want to break up on the route. Well, you know, when you're having these, these little miscommunications and you're having, you know, these, these mistakes in a game, 
a game of this magnitude, it, it, it becomes huge. And I'll tell you what another key moment of this game was, guys. And if the Chiefs held the Eagles to a field goal. After they scored that first touchdown, their first possession, the Eagles overcame a couple of scares during that drive. They ran 17 plays and didn't get in the end zone. They settled for a field goal, and that was where they got a break on the, on the Sanders fumble that looked like a fumble. They overturned it. It, it wasn't a completion. Uh, and then there was the third and 14th throw to Goddard, which was reviewed over and over. They turned, it turned out that he did make the reception. They had all the momentum to score a touchdown on that drive, and the Chiefs held them to a 33-yard field goal. Ran 17 plays, couldn't get a touchdown to counter what the Chiefs did. I thought it was a big turnaround. Basically, Kansas City did in this game what they did against Jacksonville, and what they did against Cincinnati. I call them a chameleon team because they know how to blend in and get the advantage of it. You go back to the Jacksonville game. Jacksonville wanted to take away the passing game. They run for 144 yards on them. They get to Cincinnati. Cincinnati takes away the run game. Mahomes hits them for 326. You look at this game. Kansas City had 32 yards rushing in the first half. They finished with a buck 58. Why? Because as we talked about, you what did we say at halftime? You know Andy Reid is going to make some kind of adjustment. And something they saw in the game field let them know that if they could control the clock, they flipped the script on the Eagles. The Eagles control the clock in the first half. Kansas City came out. If we score in this first possession, we control the clock. We're back in this thing. And sure enough, that's exactly what they did. Well, I, I think you, in order for you to really figure out what happened, so the Chiefs come out, they go six plays, 75 yards, touchdown to Kelsey. That ties the score at 7-7. Seven to seven. Then it goes seven plays, 42 yards. Bucker misses a 42-yard field goal. This, 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 these, are the, the, these are the first half stats for the Chiefs. Then it goes three plays, two yards, punt. Five plays, nine yards, punt. And the whole time, you know, the Eagles have got, you know, are just running rough shot over. Time of possession was 21 to 7. Absolutely. So, Unbelievable. In the first so, half. So, then, Unbelievable. so then you go in at halftime, you know, and the mindset has to be, guys, we haven't done anything. And we we have the wherewithal. We got the quarterback, the tight end, and the players to do something, but we haven't done anything. Okay, so let's sit down and take a look at, you know, we, we got a long halftime. Instead of 13 minutes, we had 29 minutes. You know, for Andy and his staff to sit back and adjust. And adjust. And you talk about probably the difference in this game, D Gun, because if they only got 13 minutes, they surely can adjust and do what they did to the Eagles in the second half. It's not that easy, but now you got 29 minutes, and all of a sudden you can sit back there and you can begin to look at the coverages that the Eagles have been playing. And I'm pretty sure Andy was like, oh my God, they're playing that much zone? Exactly. Oh, these are the adjustments that we're going to make. Here's our zone killers right here. When they're in man and they come with a blitz, which is very rare, this is what we're going to do. Because anytime that you send motion, they're trying to communicate to the other side. Like Greg Olson said, a cornerback's worst nightmare is motion across in zero coverage. And there's nobody over there to pick him up where he can rotate with the safety. Well, oh my goodness, they're looking at the other side. And instead of keeping their eye on the man, they're looking at the quarterback. The guy comes down, adjusts back out, touchdown. They Twice. didn't do it. They Twice. didn't do it uh, exactly. They didn't do it once. Twice. They did it to slay one time, and the next possession they came back and did the same exact thing to Avante Maddox on the so other the, side. So the question is, what was the conversation that went on when the offense was out on the field about what the adjustment would be to that short motion by Z or X? Look, they had never seen that before. The way they played both those plays. And here's the other thing: they they gave him a touchdown. They gave him a turnover touchdown. And they came right back on that next drive. They converted two fourth downs on that next drive and made a couple of big plays to go up 21-14 to take control of the game again. This is why this, this loss is so perplexing to me. They, they had control of this game, and they allowed to slip through their fingers and, and go into halftime with a 24-14 lead, wedging another three points in before halftime, and looked like they had it totally in control. Mike, it's just stunning that why, they lost why, this why, game. Why are you so perplexed? Okay. I don't, I'm stunned by the fact that they had this under control. They had a quarterback look like he was down and out. And in and, and the second half, their defense just fell apart. Well, it, It's just I hadn't seen that in the Eagles. I hadn't seen them fall apart like that listen, in any game. When, they were when, you have, when you have one coach is playing chess and the other coach is playing checkers, this is what you get. 
And what you did not have in the second half that you had in the first half is what the Eagles have been consisting of all season long. They play complementary football on both sides of the ball. You got a defense that's dominating, that's getting off the field, that's creating some turnovers, and you got an offense that scores a lot of points. Well, the offense scored a lot of points. Defense didn't hold up its end of the bargain today. They didn't get any pressure on a gimpy, you know, quarterback. They didn't get any sacks. You know, they didn't they didn't create any turnovers in this football game. And in my opinion, that's the difference. We turned the ball over one time in a massive way. You know what the biggest difference was? When you look now that you look now that we sit here, go back and look at the caliber of competition they played for most of this season. What was the difference today? You played the MVP in the number one offense in the highest scoring offense in the league. They do adjustments better than anybody in the National Football League. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but the bottom line is there was a reason why they were 16-3 just like this Eagles team because of their ability to adjust on the fly consistently all year long. So, they question, did it today. so question, is that a personnel and a player problem or is that a coach problem? Because you know what? Because you know what? They got out foxed. In a coaching staff got out fox today. There's no question. Yes. We talked about yes. I, like we maybe we didn't uh, put, put enough emphasis on the fact that the, the Chiefs have an experienced coaching staff and they've been there before. The Eagles don't. You know, you know these coaches survive all year uh, with with, a, with pretty good acclaim, but when push came to shove, their, their their coaches didn't get it done in the second half. They just, especially defensively. I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> And it's especially Jonathan Gannon. Um, and I know he won't talk after this game, but they should have access to Jonathan Gannon to get inside his head and ask him, what were you doing? Because when Kansas City adjusted, how in the world for the last 30 minutes of this game did you not make adjustments as well? How is that possible? Because you had a coordinator on the other side of the football that made the necessary adjustments, but you didn't. Degon, I, I, you know, I said it all year long, you know, it took the 20th game of the season for it to come to roost, and everybody called me the hater, oh, yeah. and everybody oh, talked yeah. about it all, well, you know. Listen, Seth, come on, man. we can't pick and choose now and say, they, they, they came up small today. <laughs> it's they, not even. They had, they had done a, a good job all year long. Yeah, yeah, but this, but, but, this but we're, talking have, about, this we're talking about the biggest game of the year. Yeah, this okay? moment you, may have been too big for the coaching no, it's staff not. and the no, it's defense. Not. No, it's not. Who you are, okay? Who okay. you are? Who you are in the biggest no, moment? I'm agreeing with you. This particular moment. So I'm not was picking. Big, and, was bigger. I'm but, not picking and choosing. To Derek's <laughs> point, okay, they played the best team today that they would play all season long, right? So then what? They got through 19 games of beating teams, okay, that were inferior to them to a certain extent that they didn't have to adjust to, and now you get in the game against one of the better teams in the league, and you can't come up with an adjustment. In 30 and, minutes and the of football? The conclusion is this coaching staff needs a little more seasoning. That's, they, basically, that's true. when it comes down to it. Well, that's they, true. They, they didn't pull their weight today. They, they got out Fox in the second half, and, and, and that team, that experienced team, took it from them. Let's take a break. I mean, this show is, is going to hurt. It, it really is. I know people are out there listening, and you're, and you're really hurting, and, and all these plans to celebrate and the whole thing. And everybody was so sure that they were going to win this game. That's why it, it's so painful right now. It's the Pond La Hockey Eagles postgame show. We're live from Ocean Casino. Mike Misnelli, Seth Joyner, Derek Gunn, Devin Caney is going to join us. And we're going to go through this and try not to cry. We're back after this. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. For the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. 
While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one, and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. We all know that taxes are just part of life. It's true during our working years, but also in retirement. But what you might not know is up to 85% of your Social Security benefits might be taxed. Our team at Thrive Financial has helped retire thousands of people across the Delaware Valley by asking questions they never knew they needed to ask, including how their Social Security benefits might be taxed. It's time to be proactive on taxes. Get your Thrive Retirement Tax Playbook today. Go passionately. Go fearlessly. Go confidently. Go birds! Go confidently towards your goals with First Trust, Philly's hometown bank for nearly 90 years, and the official bank of the Philadelphia Eagles. We're focused on getting you over the goal line. So go with conviction. Go with trust. Go birds! And go forward with us by your side. First Trust Bank, the official bank of Philadelphia dreams. Oh, and go birds. Go for the beers, go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the scene, go for the screens. Go for the gallery, go for the win. Go to Ocean. Welcome to Pond Lee Hockey. We've helped over 100,000 injured and disabled workers obtain benefits, as well as some of the biggest settlements in the state. If you've been injured at work, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. Score and save at Southeastern PA in Delaware with Colony Pools this football season. And let the experts close your pool with a custom Merlin safety cover in green for the birds. And if you join our winter watch team, we'll give you another 20% off and Colony Pools will handle it all. Keep your tiles on your pool, not in your pool. Fly with Colony right now, birds fans. Visit flywithcolony.com. Jeff D'Ambrosio doesn't need a special event to appreciate his customers. Jeff shows his appreciation to them every day of the year. Jeff makes sure to stock more new inventory than anyone and guarantees prices and payments that nobody can beat. There are so many reasons that thousands of customers know Jeff is the easy, friendly place to do business. More for their trades. No judgment zone for credit issues. The best, most reliable service department in the country. That's why I like Jeff, and I know you will too. Jeff will satisfy you every day. Jeff D'Ambrosio, Destination Downingtown, Owner Appreciation Event. Well, welcome back to the Pond La Hockey Eagles postgame show live from Ocean Casino. If you're watching us on the 6abc.com or on the Jacob YouTube sports channel, we are as devastated as most fans out there as the Eagles lose 38-35, uh, a field goal, uh, a 27-yarder uh, by uh, Harrison Butker to win the game. And how they even got to that point is still mystifying to me. The Eagles had 417 yards of offense in this game and still wound up losing the game. Uh, and their defense, which has been really solid all year long, just, just gave it up in the second half and with the Chiefs with four possessions scored on all four of them, three touchdowns to take command of the game and then the game-winning field goal. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, just, I don't really know what to say. I'm just, uh, in the first half, I was firmly convinced that the Eagles were going to win this game. Philadelphia was going to have another celebration. And all of a sudden, the game evaporated. So, fellas, I mean, what, what what can you say? I can say in a lot of ways, I'm not surprised. We we knew Gannon was it was going to catch up to him sooner or later. You know, the fact that this team racked up historic numbers defensively, 
70 sacks, 78 through, including two playoff games, one of the best in turnover ratio. You can't overlook that fact. I don't care who they play on their schedule, but the bottom line is, as Seth alluded to a few moments ago, they racked up those stacks against inferior opponents. Okay? Now, people want to say, well, they went 5-1 and one against winning teams or whatever the case may be. Well, who, who did they play? Minnesota? Minnesota was a fraud, right? Minnesota was a yeah. fraud. The Giants were basically fraud. a team that was a fraud, fraud that's in a rebuilding mode. Okay? The only team that, that, that really took my part was Dallas, and they didn't have Hurts for that game. 49ers lost two quarterbacks, okay? Meet the Giants again in the playoffs. Daniel Jones does not have enough talent, nor does Brian Dayball. You came up in this game, the game of the year. You fought your way through 19 games to get to this point to face the marquee quarterback in the game, two-time MVP, set new records for passing, leading touchdown, leading offense, and that's the kind of performance you went up and put out there as a defense. Right, the, the quarterback only threw for 182 yards. Doesn't make regular, it. But no, they ran, I'm, I'm they you ran like, through your defense. If you would have told me defense. before the game yes. that, that they would hold Mahomes to 182 yards, I would say yeah, that's a pretty good deal. But they, they did wound up not stopping the run in the second half, and they allowed him to throw three touchdowns, yes. and he wriggled out of, of, of some situations with scrambles that I still can't believe he got. Uh, that 26-yard was a killer. He did that in the Cincinnati game that set them up for that game-winning field goal. You know, I don't know how bad this guy's ankle hurt, but kudos to that training staff for being able to tape him up, whatever they did to him, whatever kind of medication they gave him to get him back in that game. But they've been doing this all season long, Mike. It's not like Mahomes has been throwing for 300, 400 yards every game. He's had a number of games where he's thrown for under 200 yards, and yet they found a way to be successful. He did it in the playoffs against uh, Jacksonville. He threw for less than 200 yards. They won that game. He did it again against this Eagles team. He didn't need to throw for 300 yards. 21 for 27, uh, and his yards per pass, 6.7. And and like like Seth said, they didn't really have anybody that dangerous, uh, but they wound up moving the football against a defense that kind of looked confused in the second half. That's what I'm most surprised about. The defense got back on its haunches, and it was like it wasn't uh, the defense that that, that had dictated. And, and, And... Listen, they held Hassan Reddick down in this game. He really was not a factor in this game. And see, that's another shocker in this game. The worst offensive lineman on Kansas City, Andrew Wiley, controlled one of the best pass rushers in the game. To the point where they had to flip him to the other side. They flipped him to the other side. He still couldn't get home, Seth. Let me tell you something, man. You think that Wiley hadn't heard all week long about the fact that he was the weak link? Yep. That Hassan Reddick was going to come in and wreck shop against him? Yeah. You don't think that that man's got a little bit of pride, you know, rolled up in him? And maybe Hassan Reddick maybe took him a little lightly. You know, you just – you never know, man. In a game of this – a game of this statue, a game of this stature, I should say, you always have, you know, these anomalies that pop up, you know, where guys don't perform well and all of a sudden they play lights out. And guys that normally perform well – you know, they, they kind of disappear like Casper the Ghost. But, I, listen, man, I, I'm, I'm just so disappointed for, you know, these football players because, you know, the players have to go out there and execute. But when you're put at a disadvantage because of, you know, how you're asked to play, you know, and the Eagles, I think the Eagles offense has got, got to get to a place, guys, where, you know, we don't get complacent about scoring points. The, in, in the National Football League, you know, yeah, we were tied with the Chiefs in points scored per game going into, you know, the, the regular season along with the playoffs. But the one thing about the Chiefs, and they've been like that all season long, and one of the reasons why they were the regular season, you know, team leading offense is because they never pull their foot off the pedal. You know, the Eagles do it in a myriad of ways. On offense, when they get a lead, they pull back. On defense, when they get a lead, they start to get passive, you know, and against great football teams like the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, you have to keep scoring. You know, the 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 Jalen Hurts fumble was big. That's seven points yep. that you just gave him, okay? Then, you know, you, you, you're, you're driving right before the half, and basically if you can put seven points on the board there, now all of a sudden you've got a 14-point lead going in at halftime. What happens? 
you go down, you stall out, wind up having to kick a field goal. You know, it's just the little small things. You know, the difference between winning and losing is so minuscule in so many ways. I, I, I'm, I'm just... I'm just disappointed, man, because I was looking forward to the damn parade. Well, man. You're, I really listen, was. You're not, the, the whole world, it seemed, thought the Eagles were going to win this game. And I'm talking about even national people. Everybody was picking the Eagles here. And, and, and the bottom line is the more experienced team, the team that has been there before, wound up winning this game. I mean, I heard Dan Orlovsky from ESPN say the Eagles are building a dynasty. Now, now where do they stand now? They, they – yeah, listen, they were in this to the end, but they obviously weren't the better team. The more experienced team won this game. They have a lot of free agents now. Uh, what's what's the, the picture look like for the Eagles now? Well, you, you, you got to retool the product before, because first and foremost at the top of the pyramid is how much money is, is Jalen Hurts going to get, okay? The owner just came out earlier in the week, last week, and said, Jalen Hurst has nothing else to prove in terms of getting his money. So mm -hmm. if, if the contract is going to get him $40, $45 million a year, now you're talking about the trickle-down effect because somebody's going to be the odd man out. The Eagles only have, of the, of the 11 starters on defense, only four are under contract for 2023 right now, okay? What are you going to do with Miles Sanders? I, it, I, I don't it, think they're re-signing Miles I don't Sanders. either, to be honest. Shane Steichen could be moving on to Indianapolis. Um you know, Gannon. I don't I'm think sure. Gannon's getting a job. He's, he's going to sure. be the defensive hey, coordinator next year. There are a whole lot of people that hope Gannon gets that Arizona job. I'm telling you right now. I don't now. think he's going to get that Arizona he, job. I, he might is, not. This is not a, a, a good look for him to get no. a job. In fact. The, the complexion of this team is going to change. Howie Roseman is one of the best in the business at working a cap to his advantage. They already know who they want to target right away to bring back. I would imagine C.J. Gardner-Johnson is at the top of their list on defense, as is Bradbury. But I don't see them play, paying Bradbury big money because you already have a corner in the opposite side making big money. No teams really have two corners making that kind of money. Somebody has to take a hit. I don't think he's coming back either because you're going to have to pay C.J. Gardner-Johnson, who, who can't, deserves can't to get paid. That dude is a good player, and they can't afford to lose him. Um, now, you know, listen, Miles Sanders had seven carries today for 16 yards. You got to get better at output from from your your marquee running back. Let me, so let, I, let, me, let, 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 let me give you guys something to chew on. You know, I said in the, in the pregame that the Eagles have to maintain who they were in terms of how they played offensively, and they deviated. The numbers say they deviated. The running backs had a total of 17 carries yes. between the three of them. Three of them, yep. For 45 yards. Hertz had 15 carries. Now, I realize sometimes those numbers are skewed because they're not all rushing design quarterback runs, okay? But you asked Jalen Hurts to throw the ball 38 times today, and you haven't asked him to throw it 38 times through two pre since I don't know when. You understand what I'm saying? So now you kind of deviated from who you were and what got you here. Because when you had the lead, when you had a 10-point lead, that was the time for you to just put your nose to the That's grindstone. Right. Pedal to the metal. And try to figure yeah. out how to get the run game going, even if it only meant that you're going to get two, three yards on first and second down, and then you got, you know, you're going to have to rely on your quarterback to try to figure out how to convert on third down. But when you look at statistically what they did, I mean, listen, in the first half, the first half, Jalen Hurts was 7 for 22, 183 yards, okay? The Eagles ran the ball 22 times for 87 yards. Now, I'm going to do the math in a minute and let you know what those, what those numbers come out to, but I'm telling you right now, they got a little too pass heavy in the second half, and they got a little too predictable in what they were doing on the offensive side of the ball. The game plan should have been when you got a lead, Okay, we're just going to demoralize you defensively, and they could never get there. And then once Patrick Mahomes got that, got his team and his offense going again, it re-energized and reinvigorated the defense, and they started playing lights out all of a sudden. Here's what I knew that Kansas City's offense was definitely in the Eagles' defense's head. If you remember the play in the second half, Patrick Mahomes floats one down the sideline just – the Juju Smith shoots to he's wide open. Now, when you look at the replay, you see Avante Maddox points, so they obviously they're playing zone. 
nobody got over. After the play, you see Darius Slay jaw jacking with Avante about who's supposed to be where. That's when you know that that offense was inside the defense's head. Well, listen, a lot of times it's not the fact that the offense is in the defense's head. It's, it's the fact that in order to be a great defense, man, you have to communicate. I don't care what anybody says. Yes. You, can't, you yeah. can't ever take anything for granted. Right. And when you're a good communicating team, nine times out of ten what winds up happening is it's an automatic thing. Right. It seems to me that the Eagles just got a little discombobulated on defense tonight because there's a couple of times where it seemed like the communication wasn't present. And then what wound up happening is they turned people loose. But they had, you know, coverage issues. You know, it's so important to be on the same page. And it just seemed like to me there were plenty of times tonight that this defense un well, un uncharacteristically were, was not on the same they're page. They're not on the same page. But, but Seth, here's the other thing. It, they, they tied the score at 35, okay? And there's five-plus minutes left in this game. This is where your defense then, th this defense that has performed all year has to perform in that kind of a situation. The Chiefs have the ball. You perform, you're going to get the ball back to win the game. And, and they didn't in that drive. You wouldn't boil it down to one drive. That was the Mahomes scramble for 26 yards. That was Pacheco converting the third and one on a sweep, and then he took it to the 10. They didn't stop them there. That's the defense that has to make a stop in order to win the game and not cut in time. And they didn't do it. Well, we talked about it. We talked about it in the pregame, D-Gun. Yeah, yeah. I, I, didn't, I, didn't I talk about, you know, the special teams not having that one play where they puke on their shoes? Yes. They did it. Yes. They damn sure <laughs> you, did you're it. You're right. You're absolutely they right. They damn sure did it. And, and to me, that might have been the straw that broke the camel's back. Was that 65-yard, you know, punt return? Yeah, that was huge. But they still tied the score. Is my point. At still that point, though, the defense now is the, the defense is in your hands. It was too easy. It was though. too easy, Mike. My it point is too it. easy. No, no, I, I get it. What I'm saying is, you still at 35-35. If your defense makes a stop, you got you can win the game. But they, they didn't make right. the stop. You're right. It, it, but that's the point. They didn't make a stop the entire second half. That's the stop. You know, as demoralizing as, as this loss was. When you look deeper into the numbers, they hit you in the gut even more so because Eagles had 417 yards. KC rallies in the second half, 340, okay? Eagles allow KC to get in the red zone five times. They put four touchdowns in the end zone. Eagles three of five. Say Amalo's false start cost them a potential touchdown as well. And then when you look at a definitive time of possession swing, usually the team with the dominant time of possession wins the game. Eagles had the ball 35 minutes, 47 seconds. Kansas City, 24-13, yet Kansas City puts 38 points on the board. That's yeah, all you need to know. They put 38 I, points I, on the board. I, I didn't expect it. That's why I'm so flummoxed there. I did not expect that defense to give it up like they gave it up in the second half. And especially, they still had a chance to recover if they make that one stop when the score is 35-35. It's five minutes left in the game. Good defenses, good teams make that stop and win the game. And they didn't do it. They allowed the other team to do it. And we haven't even mentioned Quez Watkins dropping that pass that could have put him in another scoring position as well. You talk about, you know, what the Eagles need, you know, next year and what they got to do. You know, I, I think they're pretty on the offensive side of the ball. They're set. If, if, if Jason Kelsey comes back, even if he doesn't, I think they're set. They're, they're set in every position except for they've got to find a feature running back because I think I don't think after – Miles' performance today, and I'm not saying you know it, it in a negative way because he had a hell of a year. Yes, but in the most in the biggest game of the season, you know he came up small. You know he, he reverted to some of the things that made everybody scratch their head about it. Yes, you know when instead of having vision, instead of having right. vision, you know a lot of times he would he was bouncing balls outside. They got to find a third wide receiver. And I know we got Lane, so I'll get to the defensive side. Yeah, we'll talk more about lane. that right now uh, from the locker room. Uh, and he's got to be disappointed like we all are, but uh, especially in that locker room. Lane Johnson joins us. And, uh, lane, listen, uh, your courage was admirable to finish out this year, and it looked like you had the game in control. I mean, how are you feeling right now with what they did in the second half? You know, it's unfortunate. Uh, you know, hats off to Kansas City. Uh, you know, when you look at the game, I mean, there was, you know, several critical mistakes. We had plenty of opportunities to, to win. I feel like we let the second half slip, which is, uh, uh, 
you know, it hurts, especially after, you, uh, you know, you put a lot of work into it. But, uh, you know, uh, that's really it, man. We battled and, uh, and came up short. And, you know, as a competitive person, I, I hate saying that. Uh, but, you know, hats off to Kansas City, man. They, they played a hell of a game and, and, and deserve it. Hey, Lane, in the first half, you guys had 270 yards of offense. But in the second yeah. half, only a buck 47. And yeah. only 11 points in the second half. What was the big turnaround? Was it was it something you guys stopped doing? Is it some adjustments uh, Kansas City made or what? Uh, I think when you look at it, like the I don't know how many total plays we had, but the first half I believe we ran close to fifty. So the tempo was up. We were running lots of plays, and I felt like we just um, weren't as uh, I guess had that same tempo the second half and didn't didn't make the plays that we needed to make. Uh, but we fought down to them, man. I mean, uh, that play Devontae had and then, uh, uh, you know, the plays we made, yeah. uh, you know, sh- shows our team has a lot, of, a lot of fight to us. And, uh, yeah, man, it uh, it is what it is. It, yeah. it, it sucks, but, hey, man, it's part of the game. I'm going to tip my hat to Kansas City. Lane, you know, the Kansas City defense, you know, ranks eighth against the run, um, giving up 107 yards a game. Um, the running backs tonight – um, could only manage 45 yards on 17 carries. Uh, it seemed yeah. like seemed like you guys, you know, for the first time this year, in my opinion, you guys struggled a little bit trying to get the running game established. Obviously, Jalen, yeah. you know, with his 15 runs for 70, 70 yards, you know, boosted the, the overall numbers. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, i got to go back and look at the film. I mean, it's, it's, it's very easy to say it might have been the running backs. I mean, the running backs had an underwhelming night, but you got to go look at how the almost line attacked, uh, you know, see how our angles were uh, and see if we made it, uh, you know, possible for them to, to have a good night, to have a decent night. So, you know, that's how this thing works. Uh, you know, everybody's in it together. And, uh, yeah, man, we, we would we would uh, much love to be on the field celebrating and uh, celebrating Philadelphia. Uh, in the, and, uh, yeah, it's just uh, – yeah, man, it's something it's going to take some time to get over. But uh, it is what it is. Lane, what, what's the mood like in the locker room? I mean, you know better than anybody that it's, it's it's not easy to get to a Super Bowl, and especially when, when it yeah. looks like you have command of the game and looks like you can actually yeah. win that Super Bowl. What are guys feeling in that locker room right now? Uh, feeling a good sting, I hope. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's why football is, is the greatest game. It, it takes – Full effort, full focus, uh, full commitment for um, 60 minutes, uh, you know, and really, you know, three-hour duration. Can you keep that same intensity? So, uh, you know, hats off to Kansas City. Uh, you know, they outperformed us tonight, and, and uh, you know, uh, you know, losing one stuff, but, uh, you know, we're learning to grow from this. Hey, Lane, we were talking on a pregame show about this new grass surface that uh, they had on the stadium called Tacoma 31, which is a combination yeah. of Bermuda and rye grass. We saw a lot of players yeah. slipping and sliding. Uh, how, was yeah. the, how was the playing surface? Because they said they wanted a more durable grass, uh, grass which allowed players to have better you know, uh, footing on the grass. But it didn't seem to be the case throughout the course of the game. Yeah, after the first series, I got my studs on because I, I could feel what I could feel what type of surface it was. I, I saw sweat in pregame, a couple of DNs slipping and sliding. But uh, yeah, I mean, even during the game, I had a lot of uh, complaints just from the other, you know, from the Kansas City's uh, team going, you know, what the hell is this? It was, you know, I feel like it was planted maybe two months ago, and I mean, you get big guys on there that are creating a lot of force and stuff's just coming up. So I don't know. Um, I think that there will be ways to improve it, and um, yeah. Uh, but I mean, that really didn't have an impact on the game. That's, that's what studs are for. Yeah, Lane, I've been there. I know what it is to win a Super Bowl. I know what it is to lose one. You now, for the first time yeah. in your career, you know, have to endure that. How do you get yeah. the guys? How do you get the guys? How do you how do you bounce back from something like this? Man, I, I, I mean. The, out, the outcome of the game shouldn't dictate how you want to be as a player uh, because what you're doing, you know, from the off season all the way up to when the season starts again, that, that's what makes you the player you are, putting in that work. And, uh, you know, when nobody's looking, when, uh, you know, when Instagram ain't going ain't going on too much, well, you know, what are you, what are you doing from day to day to improve? And so, uh, you know, a loss, you can learn a lot from a loss. Uh, 
and you can grow a lot as a player from a loss. Uh, and, uh, you know, being on the other side of the point this time, uh, I think it'll be a good lesson learned. Uh, you know, it's one of the things you would, you, you know, this is everything you dream of, but at the other end, uh, you know, I'm happy I have some guys over there uh, that play with me in college uh, that, I've, that I'm happy for. And uh, they'll celebrate it tonight. And, yeah, man, uh, just just grow from it and, uh, and, and and use it to become a better player. Uh, Lane, just give us an update on, on your condition now. When will you get the surgery? And, uh, you know, uh, looking forward to the rehab and, and, and being back next year. Yeah. When, when will all this happen? Uh, I believe it'll happen, you know, probably either Tuesday, Wednesday. That's what I'm assuming. I'll probably come in for a checkup uh, to evaluate, uh, you know, where we are at currently and then uh, get the surgery. They say it's too much process, uh, but um, – Usually guys are walking and moving around pretty well in, in two weeks. This is what uh, Nick Bosa had last year and Joey Bosa had at the end of this year. But I'm like, if I can play games w uh, without it, I'm like, I think I'll be all right. So my goal is to, is to come back and be a better player than I was this year. Uh, there's, there's a lot of areas to improve. And, uh, yeah, man, like I said, uh, you know, I, I feel like I have a few years left in this league, and I want to go out uh, being the best version of myself. And that's what I want to push myself to be and. And, uh, and be a leader along the way. So, uh, you know, that's my goal, and uh, to help this team improve uh, for the next the next few years. Lane, I I've talked to so many players in situation like situations like this that lose big games like this, and they all see different things in terms of how long it takes it to get it out of their system. So I ask you, yeah. how long will it take for you to get this one out of your system? How long will it linger for you? The rest of my life. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, there, there is there is some fact to that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like it's like losing a loved one. I mean, there's always going to be a piece. You know, it feels like it's taken from you. But uh, yeah, man. Hey, quick in memory. Uh, you know, as an offensive lineman, there there isn't a whole lot of good that, that comes uh, in the game. It's you know, it's a lot of focus, and uh, you know, because you have premier premier pass rushers, and you know, one, one bad step, you can. Uh, you know, you can have a bad game. So, yeah, yeah man, I pr I'm proud of roll line. I'm proud of Stouta. Uh, and, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to uh, to uh, make, making a, another beast uh, next year with our offensive line. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the way we've been operating. Lane, I know football is a team game, man. But, you know, I've been a Jalen Hurts fan ever since Howie drafted him. Um, yeah. G give, me, give me some insight on this guy because, you know, he answered the call all season long. He answered the call tonight with 304 yards passing and 79 yards, 70 yards rushing, uh, one passing touchdown and three rushing touchdowns. Just just give us some insight on this kid and how much better he can get. I mean, I feel I feel like an older brother to him. Uh, can't tell you how proud I am. Just uh, you know, watching the evolution of uh, really his whole his whole career as as a quarterback, going back from college to. Uh, where he is now, it's like a lot of people didn't think he would, he would have the year that he's had. And, uh, you know, as far as him, uh, he's got a, such a good head on his shoulders and is so mature for his age. And, uh, I mean, re really, he's about his work. He's, he's about his family uh, and his friends. And, and that's really it. And I, I feel like with his body language and his presence and how he carries himself, it, uh, you know, it sets the tone for offense. It really has all year. So, uh, he's still young. He's looking to improve. So just, just uh, uh, like me, we're, we're going to recover from this and uh, and it's back to work. Lane, listen, uh, thanks very much uh, all season for being with us. We really appreciate it. You started, uh, showed some tremendous courage to, to gut it out through these last games, these important games. Our best wishes for your full recovery. And, yep, uh, exactly. you know, I, I, as, uh, I know that it won't be a pleasant flight home, but uh, – you guys have had a great season and, and, and gave fans a lot of thrills. So be proud of that. Yep. Heal up well, guys. Buddy. Real I, quick. Yeah, guys, I appreciate you. It's, it's been great all year uh, talking with y'all. Love y'all. Uh, love Philly. And uh, and we'll be back. Absolutely, man. All right. Heal well, quickly, my friend. Man. Heal Lane quickly. Johnson, live from Glendale, Arizona. I mean, that dude I just is want to a tell man. Him thanks, thanks for a hell of a year, man. It's been yeah. one hell of a season. Uh, well, it, it really has. And, and, you know, like Seth, you, you mentioned you've, you've been on the losing end and, and on the winning end. Uh, a loss like that always sticks with you. It's, they, they never, you never brush it off. I mean, it's when you lose something, even though you made it to that far, it's still devastating. Well, you know, 
it's it's always a little easier when you got one in your back pocket. Yeah. You know, for me, I lost my first one, you know, in my 12th year, and I knew I was on, you know, I was on the 18th hole of my career, so to speak. So, you know, I didn't know whether I was ever going to get an opportunity to get back again. Fortunately, you know, I got an opportunity to get it done. But, you know, that off season, man, that off season after we lost, I mean, I left Green Bay and I came back. I went back home to Arizona. I don't think I left my house for two and a half months, man. Wow. I mean, I was, I wow. was, I was that depressed. Um, and so it's tough, and, and and it's 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 different for different players because you have, you know, older players, you know, who've never experienced winning a Super Bowl that have to live with that because the chase and the hunt continues, and then you got young players, you know, who get to go to a, 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 a championship, a Super Bowl early in their career and have, you know, the misguided belief that you can do this every year. But it doesn't come like, it doesn't, doesn't fall that way. I mean, I played 12 years before I got to my first one and won it in year 13. And I know a lot of great players, Hall of Fame players, that played long careers, 10, 15 years, and never got a chance to play in this game right here. And when I tell you it hurts, man, you know, the, 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 to the guys that it really matters to, when it really matters to you, when you eat, sleep, drink, and live football on a daily basis, this will gnaw at a guy like Jalen Hurts. I'm telling you right now. I mean, it, it, it hurts to drop one, especially when you are that close. All right, let's take a break, and we'll have the uh, Devin Caney joining us with the Diamond Debate. We also have John McMullen a little later in the show. So, you know, this, it's a tough lament. This show is tough to do. Uh, with the Eagles losing a game that everybody thought they would win beforehand and then watching the game. So we're back to discuss it. It is the uh, Pond La Hockey Eagles postgame show back after this. Hi, everybody. My name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at Dry Tech. At Dry Tech, we offer three major services, the first one being basement waterproofing, the second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs, and then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give Dry Tech a call or check us out online. husband hadn't missed work in 15 years. His injury required months of rehabilitation, and unfortunately, the insurance company didn't see it that way. I was working two jobs, but it wasn't enough. One conversation with Pond Lee Hockey changed everything. We sat down, told him our story, and they guided us through the whole workers' compensation legal process. Pond Lee Hockey, tell us your story. Seth Joyner. I knew that they had a running game. Derek Gunn. He has put in the effort. Devin Caney. Had we not won the Super Bowl, what would we be saying? And Mike Missanelli. Well, you know how Philly is. Post game. Now streaming on the 6ABC family of apps. Celebrating the life of your loved one is what we do at Life Celebrations by Givenish. My son Kellen was a lively, vivacious, and sassy child. At the age of four and a half, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor, and he had a very short battle of only 10 months before he lost his life. Life Celebrations by Givenish, customizing services as unique as the individual. I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew that I wanted to celebrate the life of my five-year-old. And knowing his personality and knowing who he was at the core, that had to be something special. 
turning tragedy into a celebration of life, no matter how hard, is what we do at Life Celebrations by Givenish. Life Celebrations by Givenish, customizing services as unique as the individual. Go for the beers, go for the cheers, go for the hit and the hits, go for the scene, go for the screens, go for the gallery, go for the win, go to ocean. Since 1977, it's always been about you, the community at Rafferty Subaru. And through the Subaru Love Promise, we prove we care by supporting charities like So Good Now. So Good Now helps kids in under-resourced areas by connecting them with student athletes to serve as mentors. We remove barriers so athletes can help youth in the corners of our communities where light and love are needed most. When you choose Rafferty Subaru, you help organizations like So Good Now. It's all about you at Rafferty Subaru. Welcome back to the Pondley Hockey Post Game Show. I'm Devin Caney. It is time for our Diamond Debate presented by Mark's Jewelers. Uh, they definitely hooked me up for this last show of the season for Super Bowl 57. Uh, got some green and diamond rings, bracelets, two necklaces, and these earrings. Uh, unfortunately, the Eagles couldn't complement it with their own Super Bowl 57 ring. But guys, let's get right to it with this Diamond Debate. Who is most to blame or even what is most to blame for the Eagles Super Bowl loss? Uh, and I know you guys have been covering this throughout the start of the show, our options, and you can weigh in if you're tuning in on the community page on YouTube and also uh, on the Jacob Sports Twitter page. Uh, coaching is currently winning with 45.7%, uh, then pass rush, officiating, and then other. Uh, now coaching I know is pretty broad because there is one coach uh, in Jonathan Gannon who you can point to and then you can also point to some play calling Seth. I know you kind of mentioned that especially on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, so I don't know who wants to start. Who do you blame and what or what do you blame for the Eagles loss? I, I think you have to look at the coaching staff. I mean you, you look at how they played in the first half. You come out and you score 20, 24 points in the first half. Seems like you know you're moving the ball at will and you're scoring at will and then you come out in the second half and you can really get nothing going in the second half of this football game. You know, now, you're going to tell me Steve Spagnuolo changed that much of what they were doing defensively to prevent you from continuing to score when they could do nothing with you in the first half. So where's your adjustments? And then secondly, where's the adjustments on the, on, on the offensive side of the ball? Well, on the defensive side of the ball, I mean. Patrick Mahomes came out, they had four possessions in the, in the second half, and they scored three touchdowns in the field goal to win the game in the second half, and you had no answer whatsoever while sitting back playing a very passive style defense. Listen, if it's not working, if what you're doing isn't working from a passivity standpoint, then at some point, you know, you just got to say, okay, we got to throw caution to the winds. We got great cornerbacks, we got good safety, great safeties, and we got one of the best slot corners, you know, in the game. Guys, you're just going to have to bear up and get this done we, we, because we have to run some blitzes. we got to get pressure on Patrick Mahomes. I mean, I, I'm, D. Gunn, I'm trying to figure out, when he took off for that long run, that 28-yard scramble, you know, were, were they in a four- or five-man front? Uh, I believe they were in a four-man front. So everybody else was back in coverage. And if you look at the play, a lot of the flow was to the opposite side of the field. That's why he was able to step up and take off to the left. Had a wide open lane for 26 yards. You know, I, and, and I'll say this. I, in, in watching this game today, the Eagles create a lot of problems for teams, you know, when they got to a point in their pass rush 
where they started running games. They were running a lot of TE stunts, a lot of ET stunts, a little T, a lot of TT stunts, and some swaps. You know where they crash everybody down and loop a guy around. You realize we didn't really see a whole lot to, of that today. No, we saw a whole lot of man-to-man, -man, one on one rushing, yes. whether it was five man yes. or four man, and we just could not apply pressure to Patrick Mahomes. I am with the majority right now. I'm blaming it on the coaching. You have multitudes of defensive players or pro uh, defensive players who were Pro Bowlers or Pro Bowl alternates. Your defense was stacked like you've never seen before on this defense. You went out and compiled all these stats, bu playing bully ball against everybody. You showed that offense of Kansas City way too much respect mm -hmm. because they, it's not like they had a burner on that offense. They had a, some decent wide receivers. They didn't have Tyreek Hill over there. you giving these dudes seven to five yard cushions and you're allowing them to run wide open across the middle of the field and on the outside routes as well. You never make an adjustment. You didn't call anything to make an adjustment. They adjusted to you. You are supposed to counter. You have the personnel to counter. Three-fourths of your secondary could have made the Pro Bowl this year, okay? You never made the necessary adjustments. You, show, you showed them too much respect. You played a fearful defense, basically, is what they did. They played fear defense. He's so concerned about not letting anything get behind him. And as I said earlier in the show, you look at the Kansas City secondary. They got a bunch of kids playing back there. They're up there playing press coverage. Now, they got burned for a touchdown. They got burned throughout the game. Steve Spagnola did not stop playing press coverage. Jonathan Gannon's crew, I don't think he, I saw him play press more than four times in the whole game, Seth. Well, how much of that comes down to, I know, a big narrative, of course, going into this game was the lack of experience Eagles. The entire coaching staff really had, aside from a few, compared to Andy Reid and this Kansas City Chiefs. When it comes to playing in these massive games like the Super Bowl, it's not right, a new thing to the a, Chiefs. Is it experience serious, or is it preparation look, or both? There was a serious lack of aggression in this game. Now, whether, right. whether they – they lumped up uh, their defensive coaches. Their coordinator was afraid to, to be aggressive. But somewhere along the line, Devin, also, a defensive player has to make a play. You know, you can't just throw it on the defensive coordinator. I get it. He had a lack of aggression. But but Slay and Maddox got, got okie doke on a play. Reddick and, and Sweat from the end, they weren't really factors. There wasn't anybody that stood out on the defensive line with that rotation that had served them well all year. C.J. Gardner-Johnson made some plays. He looked like the best player they had on defense. Nobody else really made an impactful no, play on defense. No. No, but the point is, see, you want to absolve the defense. I don't want to absolve them. Okay. I didn't absolve okay. them at all. Well, I was going to say a, an, uh, an option that I did not list that I guess kind of falls under defense and just like their lack of, of making any plays, especially in the second half. How much of that is credit to the Chiefs' offense and their offensive line for protecting Mahomes? Well, you're competing. So, you know, obviously they didn't get a sack today. So if you didn't get a sack, you got to give them, you know, some, some yeah. credit. But I'm not saying you're, you're absolving the, the defense coordinator, but the coordinator's job, his job is, okay, I got 11 pieces on the board, okay? How do I deploy it? Okay, and if you're deploying them one way and it's not working, well, you damn well better have another way to deploy them because guess what? Your opponent is just going to keep exploiting you. And exploiting you, and exploiting you I totally until, agree with until you. you figure out a way to change. Now, because the Eagles' pass rush was so prolific this year, okay, it was okay to give Jonathan Gannon a pass because how do you argue with four guys with double-digit sacks, seventy sacks? You break the the, the the team sack record, okay? The number two defense in the National Football League. How do you argue with that? I mean, I even got no, to a point, I, 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 wait a minute, Mike, even I got to a point, you know, where I was like, okay, let me step back and give Jonathan Gannon the benefit of the doubt. Where deep down inside, I knew full well, full well, that a lack of aggression would bite them in the ass at some point. I got it. He, it, it. I said lack of aggression, and, and that's the defensive coordinator's responsibility. But again, you always talk about eye discipline, players making plays. What was the eye discipline on the Maddox and Slay plays? They, 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 they turned their eyes away from the play. They, they lost the focus of the play. Hey, listen, sometimes, you know, if, if you don't talk about things pre-snap, then the same way you try to speed a quarterback's clock up, your clock gets sped up, okay? So now they start to see the motion come down, and they're afraid that the guy's going to go in motion all the way across. So now you're trying to have this conversation with a guy way on the other side of the formation. 
And and the undisciplined part is when the guy goes in motion, I got to be able to have peripheral vision where I can see my guy and see the guy over on the other side and with hand signals tell him what I want to do. What happened with Maddox and what happened with, with Slay is that they put their eyes across to see the guy on the other side and lost vision of the guy who they were supposed to be, be covering. And the ball snapped and boom, he... Too goes late. in and comes and, right back and out. that's their late. fault. Yes, that's late. what I'm saying about guys being able to make a play. Those guys are experienced guys, Seth. You know, they, they, they turned their heads completely away from the play. Preparation, preparation, though. preparation, my friend. Preparation, okay? Preparation. The way, the, way that you, the way that you practice is the way that you play. And piss poor preparation causes terrible play. So that falls under Jonathan Gannon in terms of, of blaming someone. Now, look, I know it's a, a team effort, a loss, a win, no matter what. Like, everyone is to blame in a way. But I'm just still – I can't wrap – I'm still kind of recovering from this, and I think we all will be for a while. Why did this happen, and how did it happen? And, you know, moving forward with this Eagles team, how did they prevent it from happening again when it comes to preparation? You know, is that on the players? Is that on Jonathan Gannon? Does that fall to Nick Sirianni? Well, I mean – so, so my my biggest problem with it is that Slay got beat on it one series. They come back the next series and they score on the same type of play on the other side. So what kind of conversation was going on on the sideline to address the problem right. of Slay getting the communication beat issue before? I mean, you know, it's one thing. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Okay, because you're not gonna beat me with the same damn play. At least not. Not the next series. Not the next series. Exactly. I mean, Slay and Bradbury yeah. and, and, and Gardner Johnson yeah. and, and, Maddox. And, and Maddox, they should have been having some conversation on the sideline. And the defensive coach should have been – the defensive secondary coach should have been having some, some conversation on the sideline when they came off to talk about what the adjustment is going to be if they run this motion again. Do, do I lock? Do I pass? Are we comboing it? What are we going to do? Because we're not going to get beat by the same thing again. I'll be damned if it didn't happen the very next series. Yeah, we, the, we, the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. We, we talk about it being uh, – start with the coaching at, at the top of the pyramid in terms of what went wrong for this team. But we also know it's a game of inches and execution. Prime example, Sayamalo, false start. Uh, takes the potential. It's, it's a, a third and one. It's those, little, it's those little moments and those penalties that you – even the Hurts fumble. And I'm not saying the loss is all on Hurts, but yeah. that Where, kills you. Quez Watkins drops the ball and right. put him in scoring position. Mm -hmm. You see Kansas City dropping many passes today? You see them making many mental mistakes in this game today? And I can't get over the fact, as inexperienced as their defense was, they took their lumps, but they didn't buckle. They mm -hmm. kept coming. The Eagles never came after Kansas City. You had the much better personnel. You had a bunch of pro bowlers on the side of the ball. You showed that man way too much respect. We know he's he is the epitome of prof, uh, at the top of the quarterback pyramid in the National Football League right now. It doesn't mean you fear him. You go out there and you attack him. The man's playing on one foot. He hurt the foot in the first half. You let him settle in in the second half and walk down the field not once, not twice. Three times to put touchdowns in the in your backside, and the fourth time put a field goal, game-winning field goal in your backside. I will ask you, and, and, and again, here's my here's my question, okay? If a team goes ten plays, twelve plays, and scores a touchdown, is it any worse than if you're playing aggressive and they go? Three plays to score a touchdown, still seven points, right? Yep, absolutely. So you might as well play aggressive. Exactly. You know what Kansas right. City did? They got beat deep. They gave up chunks of real estate. Did they keep coming? Never back down. They no, never and, back and, down. And to, and to your point, listen, the Eagles' strength, they, they sacked the quarterback. They especially sack it with Hassan Reddick. Well, he wasn't getting there today. And he's a straight angle rusher where he attacks the right shoulder of the offensive tackle, right? Well, he wasn't getting home doing that. So you're right. The defensive coordinator or the defensive coaching staff ha has to uh, change it up, maybe run some stunts, maybe blitz, get more aggressive. Yeah. you got to get those guys home on the quarterback. And they didn't get home all day. Like in the floor of the game, you could tell that, you know, the pass rush wasn't getting there. They got close a couple of times. They even had Mahomes in the pocket dead to rights a few times. Yes. But they couldn't get off the blocks, you know, to get to him. Exactly. But 
you know, in situations like that, that's the one time, that's the, that's the time where you have the ability to bring a late blitzer. Once the protection declares itself and you got a late runner to the ball, you know, to the quarterback, you got a guy that's coming that can, that, that can help you out. But they're so hell-bent on trying to stay as solid on the back end and not give up the big play that they're afraid to bring the extra guy from time to time. They're afraid to, you know, show a blitz and then drop in the zone. I mean, today we just lined up like statues and played. We didn't ever show blitz and then come out. If we showed it, the guys got antsy. I mean, we're sitting there watching the game That's degun, right. and what did right. I say? Yep. I said, here they come. Yep. You know, I could tell you every single time. So yep. if I could see it, you want to tell me the greatest, the best quarterback in the game today, that he didn't see it? That's right. So you got to be able to disguise what you want to do. You got to be able to disguise when you want to come, and you got to be able to show them that you're coming, and then drop out and play coverage behind it, whether it's man or whether it's zone. I, I, I'm looking at some of the comments coming out of the locker room from players, and I know a lot of Eagle fans were screaming about the refs favoring Kansas City, especially in the James Bradbury holding play. Bradbury came out in the locker room and said basically, he takes accountability for it. I got to give him a lot of respect for this. Absolutely. He said, I take accountability. He said, it was holding. He said, I was hoping the refs would just let it go. Oh, he said that. Oh, he said, I was hoping the refs would let it go. Wow. Now, okay. in a game like this, everybody's holding. Everybody's cheap. He just got caught with his hand in the cookie jar at that wow. particular time. Yeah, I mean, literally, NFL's rigged is, is trending on Twitter because a lot of people are saying that that call was, they was not uh, legit. But <laughs> it is what it is. You can call it. You can call a penalty on every play if you really wanted to. If you really stop and you look at it in its totality, you know, you can call something every single time. But let me tell you something. The reason why, the reason why in professional football you see, you see um, penalties is because nine times out of ten, a player is beat mm -hmm. and he's out of position. Right. And he's trying to get back in position. That's why your technique and your fundamentals are so important. That's why your eyes are so important. For for James Bradbury there, listen, I tip my hat to him because the hardest thing to do is to stand up in front of the world yes. and say, I take a, a, accountability, you know, for a play that was monumental in the loss of a Super Bowl. But I also feel like, you know, Gosh, you know, if that's your guy, man, get your eyes on your guy. Let your guy's eye and his body language let you know what's going on so you're in good position to be able to play the game. I see our defensive backs get caught up so many times being out of position because they're trying to see what the hell the quarterback is doing. If I'm in man coverage, I don't give a damn what he's doing because if that ball's in the air and, and, and I'm in phase and I'm in the right position, guess what? His eyes are going to tell me everything that I need. To right. See, I, everything that I need to know. Well, and, and the thing is, uh, whether you like that call, didn't like that call, it, it should have never come down to that, right? If the Eagles did what they needed to do in the second half, it shouldn't have. Uh, we will have much more discussion. That wraps up our Diamond Debate, but we will have much more discussion on the Pond Hockey Post Game Show coming up after this break. We'll have the Jeff D'Ambrosio Auto Group Drive of the Game. Stick around. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. The greatest fans on earth. It's a bold statement, but would you expect anything less from Philadelphia? 
58 years of heartache creates a toughness, a grit, a resolve not found in most. Sure, our prayers were answered, but now that we've had a taste, we're looking for more. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Go passionately. Go fearlessly. Go confidently. Go birds! <clears throat> Go confidently towards your goals with First Trust, Philly's hometown bank for nearly 90 years and the official bank of the Philadelphia Eagles. We're focused on getting you over the goal line. So go with conviction, go with trust. Go Bird! And go forward with us by your side. First Trust Bank, the official bank of Philadelphia dreams. Oh, and go Birds. My name is uh, Fran Solano. I'm a managing director here at Del Valle Insurance Group. Been in the business for over 36 years, saving people money on their insurance needs. Give us a call. Let us help you custom design an insurance plan that meets both your needs and budget. Staffing is not easy, but that's what we do every day, all day. The key to our success is storytelling, asking the right questions to find the right people. Hi, I'm Gary Kane, president of Kane Partners. We want to be your staffing partner. Why do millions of people every year from around the world visit Philly's Rocky statue? You want to tell me the sky is burgundy with green stripes and yellow polka dots? I'll meet you on that. But you're never going to convince me Rocky is anything other than the pure greatness that it is. Never going to happen. Join me, Paul Farber, for WHYY's The Statue. We're going on a journey to explore the biography of the Rocky statue. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Jeff D'Ambrosio doesn't need a special event to appreciate his customers. Jeff shows his appreciation to them every day of the year. Jeff makes sure to stock more new inventory than anyone and guarantees prices and payments that nobody can beat. There are so many reasons that thousands of customers know Jeff is the easy, friendly place to do business. More for their trades. No judgment zone for credit issues. The best, most reliable service department in the country. That's why I like Jeff, and I know you will too. Jeff will satisfy you every day. Jeff D'Ambrosio, Destination Downingtown, Owner Appreciation Event. Welcome back to the Pond the Hockey post game show. It's time for our Jeff D'Ambrosio Auto Group drive of the game. Go JeffAuto.com. Uh, I've been picking on you guys all season long. Uh, let's go with you, D Gun. You no, look you like, pick, no, you no, you look like you're ready season. to go. It's always fun. I was fun. just about to say, you always it's, pick on me. Well, it's always fun to do in like a bad loss like this when there really aren't too, too many uh, drives to choose from. But you guys at least have more than one. We've had a few games where there have been like Ooh, one man. clean drive that you can choose from. And look, wow. it was a loss. Maybe we go with the worst drive of the game. Shake things up a bit. I don't know. All right, listen, the drive of the game is the Chiefs taking the lead. It's <laughs> Mikey is saving it. Is well, well, she coming to you? No, but I no, no, no. Uh, no, 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 you got it. You got it. I heard silence. The drive of the game is the Chiefs take their first lead of the game. But if you want to look at the Eagles and, and patronize their drive of the game, I thought uh, their drive of the game was a 12-play, 75-yarder that, that made it 21-14 to because they – they converted three third downs in that drive, and that was the fourth and five where Jalen had the quarterback draw for, for 28, and then he converted another fourth down via a penalty. So hey, this is Gallo's uh, selection here. You know, I'm just <laughs> like a drive in the game. I'm going, it's, it's, the, it's the Chiefs. They took the lead, and they went, all of a sudden they go, hey, guess what? Uh, we're back. Yeah. Well, we've arrived. Uh, and to me, that turned the game around when they got the lead for the first time. All right, all right I'm ready. 
Oh, you, okay. I'm ready. Go ahead. <laughs> All yours. Stage is yours, Dika. For me, the drive of the game for the Eagles, if you try to put a positive spin on that, is Kansas City goes up 35-27. Mm. Eagles are in dire straits. They march right back down the field. Not only do they get the touchdown, they get the two-point conversion yes. to tight. Yeah. They put themselves in it. And that was with 5.15 left in the game. They put themselves in a position to possibly win the game, but unfortunately, the defense did them in. But for me, for them to rally in that situation, that was my drive of the game. You know what? It's really unfortunate that a loss will, and the way it happened, will kind of overshadow what Jalen Hurts did tonight. Sure, where sure. he really, I know he had a fumble, but he had an incredible performance. Yes, he did. And that drive in particular, watching it, had, and I know they ended up losing in the end, but that still, had they not done anything right. on that drive, the game would have been over then. It wouldn't have even right. been tied at the end there. Uh, so, yeah, I, I like that uh, selection, Deegan. And there were Thank some you. bright spots. I know we don't really want to be positive right now. We can all mourn this loss a bit. But even that pass to A.J. Brown in the first half of the game, that was incredible. Yeah. Like, there were some great moments from this Eagles team in this game. It was a great game. It was a great back and it was forth a game. It was. If you, were, if you weren't invested in the Eagles winning a game, I'm sure, like, nationally, you're like, wow, this is a great game. Yeah. We're going up and down. But, Probably but, but when the they, most when entertaining they, Super Bowl in recent years, honestly. Yeah, it was a great Super Bowl. But when, when you have a 24 to 14 lead at halftime and that quarterback looks gimpy, you go, wow, we're in good shape here to win a Super Bowl. Mm. You know, and it just was snatched away in the second half. We, we were thinking so much that, that Mahomes might not return. I said to Seth and Mike, I said, in all the years I've covered football, I've never covered a team where – the two starting quarterbacks in two consecutive games get knocked out of a game. Yeah. 49ers lose two, and we're thinking Mahomes is not coming back when you looked at how he was grimacing. Lo and behold, whatever they did, yeah, take him up, shot him up. What did they do to him at halftime, oh, no. by the way? Because hey. that they do, Seth? fine. What did they, yeah, they do at halftime, Seth? Seth? What did they do? They what kind some, of drugs? They got some pile of stuff back there in that <laughs> training room. I can tell you that. <laughs> what's I, what's I know, the call, Seth? I, I, know, I know from firsthand experience. <laughs> Seth, I hope my mom is watching because she's so funny. She's texting like our family group chat like, they're cheating. He was faking his injury. <laughs> there was no way. Look at him running. I'm like, Mom, they definitely just shot him up with some powerful drugs. I yeah, think that's I, more I, likely I, what I, happened. I, I think maybe in the second half, the Eagles kind of fell into, you know, the trap a little bit of believing how hurt he actually was. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I mean, he got out and made some, some runs that really hurt them, you know, in the second half. You know, first down, runs for first down. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I just, you know, my, my – my mentality is so much different than, you know, what you see. If he was hurt, I was going to make, you know, it was our intention to make sure he was hurt and that he wouldn't come back in. Mm -hmm. That's not today's NFL. They don't play that way anymore. Um, but I, I still I still think that. But at the very least, put heat on him to make to make sure he earns that with a, with a bad, Absolutely. A bad foot. Uh -huh. let's, let's, let's find out just how immobile he can really be. Yes. You know, and instead of sitting back playing zone, you know that. He's an all-around great quarterback. He can beat you from the pocket. He can beat you on the move. He can beat you with his legs. Let's find out early in the in the in the first in the second half, rather, where he is, and and, and what kind of pressure we can apply to him. But you know, like the saying says, the saying goes, "Scared money don't win yeah. none." I, I will I will say this also. Mahomes was in the best hands possible to get him through. Cincinnati game in this game. The head athletic trainer, Rick Burkholder, is a good friend of mine. He's he's the head of the Athletic Training Association in the NFL. Nobody, nobody, and I want to emphasize again, nobody does a better job in the league of rehabbing players and getting them back on the field sooner rather than later than Rick Burkholder does. So in, in, a, in a day from now, a couple of days from now, I want to ask, what exactly did you do to Mahomes to get him ready for – this game, get it, wait, first of all, he completed that Jacksonville game after mm -hmm. he went out for a while. Yeah. Comes back the next week on one leg and beats Cincinnati, and now this. I have to know, what exactly did you he do? He is not going to tell you. He'll what tell me. Shot I can't man. tell you, but he'll tell me. I can tell you. <laughs> But no, no, I, no. But see, I ain't. Look, the stuff, the stuff that you had back in your day, I don't know if they, that's legal. Man, you know, need to stop. Oh, my God. Really? Now I need to know more. Come on, man. I don't know if it's does. legal. Is it still legal? As a matter of fact, a lot of the stuff that they were using back then yeah. that was illegal yeah. is now illegal as an absorption trans transmitter oh. now. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. DMS, Wait, DMSO. <laughs> what does that mean? 
Oh, that's that Canadian stuff. DMSO. DMSO. What, is that, what does that it, it do? Was, it, was, it was a horse liniment that was illegal oh, yeah. to be used on humans yeah. back in the day. But our old trainer used to use it. Well, now it's a major absorption you know, factor that they use in a lot of medications yeah. now. Yeah. And it's phenomenal because they, you know, they paired it back and they create stuff in the proper way. I used Wait, to put that on it? my arm. Oh yeah! What's I used its to rub purpose? My arms like, does it, it like <laughs> takes away? It takes away. I, I knew we was Kendra spirits, man. It took it took night twenty weeks to, for us to get there, Mike. Come on, man. Oh yeah, I had it. <laughs> oh man. Um, uh, you need to give our your drive of the game, Seth. Not getting off that easy. Um, my drive of the game is the same as D Guns. Okay. I, I think the mental fortitude of this football team to be down by eight points and go eight plays, 75 yards, and take four minutes off the, off the clock. And not only punch it in with Jalen for his third touchdown of the game, but then turn around and get the two-point conversion to tie it. You know, we just got to get our we, – we just need to get our defense to where our offense is, you know, as far as that's concerned. Mm. Um, but that, that showed me a lot about who Jalen Hurts is, and I hope all the – all the haters, um, all the clowns that talk about, you know, uh, you know, anyone can play quarterback for the Eagles, and you know, Jalen Hurts isn't that good of a quarterback, and talk about what he is and what he isn't. Listen, dude threw for over 300 yards tonight, okay, and ran the ball, you know, for 70 yards and three rushing touchdowns. He accounted, you know, for the majority of the Philadelphia Eagles' offense. Just think about this. He had 15 runs, and he threw the ball um, 38 times. That's 53 total plays. The Eagles only had 72 plays now. So you, I'm, 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 not, I'm not a math wizard, you know, <laughs> but someone sitting here might be. You can throw a percentage on that real quick, Mike. <laughs> what is it again? F 53. I love that Mike gets Mike, <laughs> Mike's the mathematician, 50, 50, the statistician. 50, 53 of the total 72 plays. Uh -huh. He threw the ball 38 times, yeah. and he ran it 15 times, and he only has 72 total plays. Yeah. So what do you? What, what percentage are you asking me? For? I'm asking. I'm talking about the percentage of plays that he accounts. So basically, he accounted Jaylen for the Hurts offense today. Was the offense exactly. today? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because and the running backs were non-existent today. I will and, say and, and, like 70 percent. And and, and and the and the the and the coaching staff were not as committed to the running game as they needed to be because mm -hmm. you got to wipe. Hurts is 15 to 17 runs off the board because there's so many pass plays that are mixed in there where he where he had to run. You know, the running backs only had 17 carries for 45 yards. That is what? 2.6 yards a carry. You talk about poultry. After racking up 47 yard 47 carries the last two games and 208 yards and 3.5 3.3.5 touchdowns. Come on, man. I mean, but it, listen, it, he made a couple of great throws. I mean, how about the one play where, where Frank Clark, he made a spin out on Frank Clark, and he converted that third down to Pascal, and then that throw to Goddard to the sidelines was just on Goddard the Goddard had some amazing he, catches Yeah, that today. was a great catch, but that throw had that to be throw, right there. That throw yeah. was a fantastic throw by yeah. him. I, I think he, he answered a lot of detractors tonight by the way he threw the ball because yeah. everyone for the last two weeks wanted to make a big deal about the fact that Jalen Hurts only threw for 121 yards against, you know, the, um, the the Giants. And then he came back and only threw for 154 yards and no touchdowns, you know, against the San Francisco 49ers. Hence, you know, you look at what he did today. You know, I, I'm not saying that that's the case, but I would much rather have seen the Eagles be able to rush for 220 yards on the ground and Jalen throw for you know, 170, 180, then I think we have we might have had a better chance of controlling the game and controlling the outcome of this game. But even in the pregame, D Gun, I talked about minimizing the amount of the amount of possessions and that you didn't want Patrick Mahomes, right. you know, to have double digit possessions. They had eight possessions, man. Yes, they did. Eight possessions in this game. You know, so usually that's good enough to beat a team like this. This that's explosive offensively. And the fact that our offense was explosive enough to put 35 points up, just couldn't close the deal. We couldn't get our, our defense to show up when it really needed to show up and it really needed to bow its neck. The numbers across the board bear credence to the fact that the Eagles should have won this game. Total yards, 
time of possession, and yet they're on the short end of the ledger. And that's what's so heartbreaking about it. It's sad. Mistakes, it is really sad. The small mistakes in big games are, gla are, are, are glaring the most. Mm -hmm. The fumble, the false start, the drop pass. Mm -hmm. Those three things, and we can talk about the defense all day, but if Jalen doesn't fumble that ball for a touchdown, it might be a different game. Yeah. Quez Watkins makes that catch, put him in scoring position, might be a different game. Yeah. Sarah Malo doesn't jump, it's, it's third and one, now you're looking at third and six, might be a different outcome. Yeah. But that's how fo that's football. That's how you know, D-Gun, I saw a mock draft the other day, if you will. Yeah. It's crazy at this point in time, you know, they, they're already starting to come out. I saw a mock draft of Philadelphia Eagles drafting a wide receiver out of USC. I second that 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 mock draft. Wait, they, in the they, first round? I don't care where they draft. They if they need, get him, in, they're not taking. A, they cannot take a receiver. They the need a third round. wide receiver. They, they need a, they need a guy who can run fast like the wind, but got strong enough hands to catch the damn ball. As much as we want the Eagles to keep a lot of the current defensive personnel, they are in a prime position right now to get younger and good real quick with two first round picks i say they need to address defense because once jalen gets his money you can't keep all these guys man these guys are getting big money kazir white bradbury cj all these guys are getting big big money from somebody I, I, I agree yeah i agree and you're gonna have to draft and the development of the young players you have on the roster yes but the one yep. thing you cannot do even after you pay jalen you cannot take any weapons away from him on the offensive side of the board no the no. The, the, the offense the offense from from this point on is going to have to carry this football team in in a certain regard, and you're going to have to go into the draft, and you're going to have to find those deep, those those diamonds in the rough, and your coaches are going to have to step up and get better at technique and fundamental type stuff, and coaching guys to be a lot more disciplined, and the communication side of yeah. defense, because you can't pay Jalen Hurts fifty million dollars and then turn around and take away what makes him worth that $50 million, his offensive line and his weapon. So you're done with Quez. I'm, I'm, done. I'm done. Well, Finish. I mean, you're, you're done with Quez. I, it's hard to yeah. not be done with yeah, Quez. Okay. Like he so, was MIA yeah. for so, a while, came back and made a mistake. Yeah, they, they probably won't need to draft the receiver. I'll tell you who they're going to draft. Who are they they're going to draft? They're going to draft the cornerback Joey Porter from Penn State with the 10th pick in the I'm draft. I'm okay with that. They're not going to re-sign Bradbury. They're going to draft him right there. He's sitting with right there for him. Yeah, but to D Guns, to D Guns' point, you know, you're already paying Slay. If you draft him in the first round, even though it's the 31st pick, you, you know it's still going to be a substantial amount of money as a first rounder. Um, yeah, but then I, they're not going to play bad, bro. Well, so but, they subtract that and they get a young corner. They're going to have to get a young corner. I mean, Slay's not getting any. Well, younger. even 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 that much more. I forgot about the Saints pick. You know, you've taken that guy with the tenth pick or the thirty-first pick. The tenth. The tenth. He's that. He's that high. They he's, can't afford to pay him. D he's guy. that I'm, high I'm, rank. I'm, I'm taking a corner or a linebacker with that tenth pick. Well, we, if we can scratch the linebacker, you know we ain't getting no damn linebacker. What's we that? Stop that. Because we got the one last year that fell to us at three, <laughs> and he's going to be required to step in and replace, you know, Kazir White. They're not bringing Kazir White back. They're going to try to figure out how to extend and how to bring back T.J. Edwards. True. But I, but I guarantee you, as a unrestricted guy, he's going to get a whole lot he's of He's going to get a lot of money, see? There's another guy. you got seven guys on that defense that are going to be looked at significant. What, what happens when you have success? Everybody wants to pick off your product, right? See, so, so, so consider this. I think that. Gardner Johnson is a guy you need to bring back. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can tender T.J. Edwards an offer, and you can tender Bradbury an offer, but you let those guys go out, you know, and test and, 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 test and shop the market. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, BG is a guy that, that doesn't want to go somewhere else and play. You figure out how you can bring him back. Oh, he will definitely take a discount. Okay. He'll take a discount. Fletcher Cox, time to say goodbye. I, I, I agree with Time you. Time to say goodbye. What about Hargrave? Hargrave, you might have to say goodbye, and you might have to use one of those two first rounders to go and get maybe the other guy from Georgia. Another D tackle? Yes, sir. And listen, Ooh. this 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 is how how we builds his football team. He builds from the offensive line and the defensive line back and out. So I find it hard to believe, you know, that the only reason he took Devontae is we were so decimated at that position yeah, yeah. that he had to go and take it. And he was the surefire guy, and he was right there available for him to get. 
But I still believe that they believe that you win the game by winning right. the trenches. Mm -hmm. True. To, to, to Mike's point, though, whoever they draft at that number 10 spot, you're going to have to pay him that slotted money. You're going to pay him no matter what. So once we, once the dust settles and we find out who's coming back and who's not, cornerback may be your primary position to look at. And, well, listen, you, you mean tell me you're going to draft a cornerback at number 10? Um, That's what and, ask, and, get and, drafted. And, and ask him to come in and play zone. The, the startable corners. You gonna ask him to come in and play well, zone as maybe a starting the, quarterback? Maybe, 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 I'm just, I'm just saying. The pedigree I'm just, guy, I'm just, though. I'm just asking the question, Dave. Maybe, right. maybe the because next. There's a whole lot of zone I, cornerbacks I, out there I, that you can get you in a second or the third round. I'm gonna pause this debate because we are going to toss to <laughs> a very, very quick break message from our partners, and we'll be back with game balls right after this. My name is uh, Fran Salerno, and I'm a managing director here at Del Val Insurance Group. Been in the business for over 36 years, saving people money on their insurance needs. Give us a call. Let us help you custom design an insurance plan that meets both your needs and budget. Post game show with Seth Joyner. I knew that they had a running game. Derek Gunn. He has put in the effort. Devin Caney. Had we not won the Super Bowl, what would we be saying? And Mike Missanelli. Well, you know how Philly is. Post game, now streaming on the 6ABC family of apps. Hey, Philly, it's Tom Giordano from Pondley Hockey Giordano. Be sure to follow Pondley Hockey on Instagram for your opportunity to win free Eagles home game tickets for the rest of the season. You heard that right. We're giving away free tickets all season long. And guess what? We're going to give away tickets to the playoffs and the Super Bowl. So make sure you're following us. And as always, thanks for watching the Pondley Hockey Post Game Show. Go Birds! Welcome back. It's time for Game Balls presented by Colony Pools, flywithcolony.com. Um, I don't know if this is going to be an easier or tough one, and I know I try to pressure you guys to have different answers here, but it seems like there might not be too many options tonight uh, in terms of who gets a game ball. Uh, who wants to start? I'll go. He jumped on that real I, quick. See, the thing is, Deegan always makes eye contact with me first, so I'm always tempted to be like, you, yep. you have the answer. But, Seth, thank you for taking that one. Go no, for it. The, 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 clearly, Jalen Hurts. Yes. You know, the big question mark coming into this season was Jalen Hurts. The star of this football game today was Jalen Hurts with 300 and, what is it, 72, uh, 372 total yards, uh, 300, 311, 374. 374. Yep. 217 total, a total. Total and a passing touchdown, um, a passing touchdown, and you know, what two two rushing touchdown. He had a QBR of 79 and a rating of 103 against you know the great Patrick Mahomes. Um, I'm 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 proud of this kid for the quarterback that he's turned into, the leader that he is for this football team. And I think that coming back next year, he's going to be even that much better because this will be his third year in a system, you know, for the first time since he was in high school. Um, I thought he he's had a phenomenal season. And, you know, I, I feel bad for him. A, that, you know, he had to miss those two games that cost him the MVP when he was clearly the front runner. And B, you know, I feel bad for him, you know, that he's in another big game and come up with the short end of the stick, not by his own, you know, his own doing, because he played his behind off to death. But you know what? A silver lining uh, is knowing what we've seen from Jalen Hurts. It doesn't seem like he's going to be knocked down for too long. He'll probably just start working towards next season. Uh, given how he prepared for this one, Mike, you just uh, well, gave me a look, listen, so I'm, let's I'm, get your I, thoughts. This is, this is hard for me here because I agree with Seth, but <laughs> he... he no, not, a, not at the that part that I agree with hard, Seth. Yeah. It's hard for me to give it to Jalen 
because he, he gave up a fumble touchdown. And so, like, if we're but he looking, was the Eagles' I, offense essentially. I, it's a touchdown. They lost. They won thirty-eight to thirty-five. The Kansas City Chiefs. That touchdown was a major difference. So, I. But I. I. I have to agree with Seth that if we're giving a game ball and we're taking consideration what he did for this team and what he did in this game, uh, I'll have to uh, agree with him. But I, I. I feel. I feel a little taint. You know, he gave up. He gave up seven on a on a where he just uh, like he wasn't even yeah. hit. He just gave up the ball there. That was. So am I being overly harsh here? No, that that yeah, was that's rough. like that, that was that's, rough. But that, that's like that's like saying, oh, you know, Steph Curry shouldn't get the MVP. He had a wide open three at the buzzer and he missed it. Come on, <laughs> man. You know, if Seth Curry gave up the ball in a turnover that led to the game winning layup, it, it's, that, it's that maybe it's different. It wasn't. It was like purely kind of on him. Like it, it's not like it was. Yeah, like I mean, a, he gave up seven points. Yeah, and no it, one's it perfect, just kind of like. Like dropped no, out no, of his no, hand. No, no one, no one is perfect. I guarantee you, when Jalen Hurts, when it, it, when they grade this this game for Jalen Hurts, and understand, coaches grade every single play of the game. You get a plus or minus for you doing your technique. You get a plus or minus for your responsibilities in the offense and the defense and how you execute. Okay, and then you get an overall grade. And I'm telling you right now. As an ex-player, if you grade out anywhere between 75 and 80, you played one hell of a game. You did. Well, listen, 417 yards speaks for itself. Seth. Okay, I so, I so, just can't get past so, the, so the, if you, the fumble if you, touchdown. So if you – okay, he threw for one touchdown and ran for three more. It would have been nice if he ran for three more yeah, without giving it, up it, the stuff. But listen, you know, <laughs> it, no it's one's – It's a tough one. Because he's, he's asking for, for, for the quarterback to play – a perfect game. Even Patrick Mahomes didn't play a perfect game. No, he didn't. He didn't. And the fumble was rough, but then Jalen Hurts did bounce back and marched down the field and scored after that. So it was a little bit of a, a redemption drive. Uh, D got do get to your game ball. Jalen Hurts has shown all season long that he protects the ball as well as anybody in the National Football League. He made one glaring mistake. Jalen Hurts on the grandest stage in all of football went out there and you wonder if a young player making his first appearance in a Super Bowl against a coach like Andy Reid, the reigning MVP, a guy who's been to three Super Bowls three times, uh, th Super Bowls three times, he's won a Super Bowl, set the record for passing if he would have some of the jitters. Now we've all grown, we've all watched Jalen all season long. And we've grown accustomed to seeing a cool, calm customer in any situation or what matter the case may be. And he was that player tonight. He hit some big throws. He threw for over 300 yards. He ran for three scores. He put his team on his back as he has all season long. So the votes are in, Devin, and it's unanimous. Jalen Hurts gets my, my ball in the game. And deservingly so. So the question I'll ask, yes. Mike, if the defense played the way it has played the last six weeks of the, of the season and Jalen Hurts played the way he played tonight, even with the turnover, is the outcome different? Of course. Okay. Of course it is. Jalen Hurts. But, but, but everything Jaylen is, Hurts, is fluid. Ladies and gentlemen. Everything is like, you know, it <laughs> happens in time. So uh, the they, defense didn't. So that fumble touchdown turned out to be a major factor in this. Yeah, how many times – how many – well, you, you go back to the drive of the game, okay? He, he puts them right back in it after they give it up, you know, give up a lead. You got a 10-point lead, and in short order, two possessions in the second half, you give it up. What does he do? Puts you right back in position again. Did I, did I give him a game ball? I gave him the game ball. Now, maybe I don't give him the Duke. I, I give him, like, like Dick Sporting Goods ball or something. <laughs> But I give him the game ball. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I get both sides because, you know what, had he not, and we could talk about the what-ifs all day long, but, you know, had he not fumbled the ball, maybe the Eagles wouldn't have lost. Um, hey, if the Eagles had made a stop and made him kick a field that's goal. That's your right. But, it could be if the I Eagles mean, did this. Yeah. If we, we, yeah. Hey, listen, um, if, if, if if and bust was candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right, that does it for our game balls That's presented by Colony poetic. Pool. Fly with Colony.com. Uh, stick around. The Pond the Hockey Post Game Show is coming back right after this break.
my wife was in an accident that changed our lives forever. She was in rehabilitation for years. She had to learn to walk again. She couldn't take care of herself. We couldn't afford a nurse. We were running out of options. One conversation with Pond Lee Hockey changed everything. They understood what we were going through and immediately helped us navigate the legal process. We can't thank them enough. Pond Lee Hockey, tell us your story. Plan your day with confidence. Keep the umbrellas on hand. With action news and AccuWeather. Numerous tornadoes. Your go-to team when severe weather strikes. The water is still rising. Keeping you prepared wherever you watch. Action news and AccuWeather, the team you trust. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. Did you know taxes could be your biggest expense during retirement? Are most of your assets in tax-deferred accounts like IRAs and 401ks? Taxes are historically low today, but we're facing significant headwinds in the future. Do you have a plan? The Thrive Financial Team has more than 100 years of experience helping people across the Delaware Valley with forward-looking tax planning. Learn how to shift your money from forever tax to no or low tax accounts. Get your Thrive Retirement Tax Playbook today. Hi, I'm Jim Muehlbronner, Managing Partner at DelVal Insurance Group. Give us a call. We're a local, knowledgeable agency, not an 800 number. Go Birds! At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass. Free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first-time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. Alrighty, welcome back to the Pond La Hockey Eagles postgame show. The last time we're doing this this year, and uh, we do it on a disappointing note, is the Eagles looked like they were going to win another Super Bowl. And they wound up losing at 38-35 with a defensive meltdown in the second half. And the man who covered this game in Glendale, Arizona, is with us, uh, John McMullen. Uh, John, uh, you know, I, it, to me it's a devastating loss uh, because they looked like they had the game in hand. Uh, how did you see it? That was a dominant performance. I, I mean, you know, if, if, if the Chiefs didn't get that uncharacteristic uh, defensive touchdown off the Jalen Hurts, you know, essentially unforced error, the Eagles are running away with that game at halftime. And it, it was still 24-14. The yardage differential was like 270 to 128, somewhere in that range. 
They were dominating the football game. We always talk about Super Bowls. You have the long halftime show. It's a little bit different. Um, they didn't want to use that as an excuse. Nobody ever wants to use that as an excuse. The field was evidently an issue, but both teams had to play on it. A lot of slipping going on. Really, the NFL should be ashamed of themselves because there's so many issues with this Super Bowl, logistically behind the scenes and all this kind of stuff. But to have the biggest game on a field like that, both teams said it was it was just bad. But again, to Jason Kelsey's credit, Hassan Reddick's credit, they talked about how bad the field was, but they both pointed out both teams on there. So there's no advantage. But Hassan did say it was the worst field he's ever played on, ever played on and this is the Super Bowl NFL should be ashamed of themselves but Eagles had every chance to win this game and they didn't get it done and it's you know Jonathan Gann is probably head coach of the Arizona Cardinals next week and you know we've come full circle he's enemy number one he 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 got a little bit back in the good graces of Philadelphia with his sort of viral quote before the San Francisco game they fell apart Second half, they could not stop the Chiefs. John, John what did Jalen Hurts say basically uh, what led to the, the actual fumble? Because he's so he's such a ball security consistent individual. I mean, that, that just shocked everybody. Yeah, it is. Anytime you see – I mean, Jalen has, Jalen has taken such great care of the football this entire season. He's just trying to move the football from one hand to the other. It's one of those things occasionally – that's what we talked about when the Eagles were plus 15, right? d Gun, we said, well, eventually you can't keep going at that pace. You're going to regress to the mean. And the Eagles did. They were still a very good team. I think they ended up plus eight or plus nine. Still very good. But you knew it couldn't stay at plus 15. Sometimes those things happen. But I got to tell you, Jalen Hurts was phenomenal in this game. And it's a shame that they weren't able to get it done because – Man, he would he, he the, we we know about the mobility, you know, but he was throwing the football well. He had some he had some tight window throws to Dallas Goddard that you know, watching them live, they were they were pretty impressive. And when Sean, he set a new record, obviously, for rushing yards by a quarterback in the Super Bowl. He's over three hundred passing. He's got the three touchdown rushing, which which sets a ties in another record. You know, he would have been the MVP just like if Patrick Mahomes didn't exist in the regular season, he would have been the MVP probably. But unfortunately for the Eagles, Patrick Mahomes exists, and he was a magician in that second half. The, the, Kansas City scored three touchdowns on three possessions, and they would have had a fourth if, if, if Jarek McKinnon wasn't savvy enough to slip down at the two-yard line because – I got news for you. Miles Sanders probably takes that in, but he understood the situation and essentially won the game by going down at the two-yard line. That was a very, very heady play by Jarek McKinnon. John, um, what, from your vantage point, happened to the Eagles on both sides of the ball? I mean, they just looked like they were just going to run away with this thing, you know, at halftime. And we come out in the second half, you know, I was talking to the guys during the game. I was like, you know, I really wish the Eagles could have figured out a way to score seven points instead of three, you know, before half. I said, because Kansas City's going to come out. They're going to make their adjustments. They're going to go right down the field. They're going to score. We're only going to be up by three. It's going to be game on. Sure enough, that's exactly what happened. And then we come back, you know, offensively the next series and – we consequently go 17 plays, 60 yards, and only get a 33-yard field goal out of it. And the rest of the way, we got nothing done from an offensive perspective until, you know, the, the last drive where Jalen Hurts actually, you know, tied the game up. Yeah, but, Seth, that last drive was pretty impressive because when the, when the Chiefs, and we've been talking all year about special teams, if the Eagles continue going down this road, it's going to bite them at some point. And we went all this way and we got to the Super Bowl, and here we are with Kadarius Toney and the big punt return setting up the touchdown. All, all of a sudden, 
you know, you're you're looking at it, you're saying it's a 35-27 game, and you're saying, uh oh, Eagles are in trouble. And, you know, people had talked all year. Well, can they come from back from behind? Can Jalen Hurts lead this team from adversity? That drive would go down in Eagles lore if they won this football game. Everybody will forget about it. It'll be a footnote. But that was a tremendous drive and a two-point conversion where Jalen just carried people in the end zone to tie the football game. And he, he did everything. The offense did everything they needed to do, and they never got the ball back. Well, they got the ball back with four seconds, but you, you get my point. Because the defense, let's be honest, they did not hold their water in the second half of this football game. Well, my my point is, I'm not. The, the point is is not to disparage, you know, what they did on the offensive side of the ball, because you got to have the ball, like you said, in order to get get things done. Uh, offensively, defensively, we just couldn't get off the field. But we had no answer in the second half for Patrick Mahomes and his defense. And I'm just wondering why. You know, if it, Jonathan Gannon has been so good at adjusting throughout this season, and he looked like he had no answer whatsoever, the players looked confused. You get Darius Slay get beat, you know, one play, and then Avante Maddox comes back the next series and gets beat on the same exact play on the other side of the field. What was going on from a communication standpoint that, you know? Well, that, that yeah, I talked about that all week. Communication was going to have to be big against the Chiefs in the back seven. I talked about it all week. I hammered it. I tried to hammer it. It was going to have to be really, really big because Travis Kelsey is so good in the middle of the field. He knows when to sit down. He and, uh, you know, he, he and Patrick Mahomes are like a great basketball duo who understand what the other one's doing at all times. They have that sort of sixth sense between themselves. And you really need to be on your P's and Q's when it comes to communication. And the Eagles weren't. They weren't. They had a bad game. They couldn't deal with Juju Smith-Schuster, never mind Travis Kelsey, <laughs> in the middle of the field. And it's disappointing to have that kind of performance at this level in this type of game, especially when you have all the momentum going into halftime. And whether everybody got into Rihanna or they're paying too much attention, I asked Nick Sirianni that after the game, what happened at halftime? Did you put your finger on it? Because they were dominating that football game. They were dominating. And they came out in the second half and completely different game. Completely, completely different game. John, there, was, there, there was a serious lack of aggression defensively in the second half. I, and I wonder if, if you know, like, nothing was done to change the momentum at all. Nobody stepped up to make a play. They didn't stomp to get pressure on the quarterback. Uh, did Sirianni say uh, anything about their lack of aggression? They were on their heels uh, most of the second half and allowed Kansas City kind of to dictate. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, we're all disappointed at that. Did, was the head coach disappointed? Did he say he was or address well, that at all? He, yeah, of course he was disappointed. I mean, anytime you give up 38 points, um, it's not a good day defensively. I had a feeling this was going to be a bit of a shootout. Um, I did talk on the pregame show about I, I think people don't understand how good Kansas City's offensive line was. And Patrick Holmes was getting the football out of his hand quickly as well. So, you know, 78 sacks in the first 19 games. In the 20th game, zero. Sorry, 18. You, you get my point. But 78 sacks. And they don't get to the quarterback. Now, part of that is Mahomes getting the football out. Uh, part of it is the Chiefs' offensive line. But Hassan had some things, and Josh Sweat, they had some things going in the first half. Nothing. Nothing in the second half. And the Eagles have relied on the talent of very good players to get past rush. Hassan Reddick has had a tremendous season. Josh Sweat, first team in – NFL history that four guys who had 10 or more sacks. They were never going to move off what they do that got them here. And on the biggest stage in the biggest moment, the defense didn't perform. John, isn't that, isn't that, excuse me, D, isn't that stubbornness, though, to say that they're never going to move off of it? 
you know, because we've talked about the, the, the lack of pressure that this defense brought, and they really didn't need to bring it because they rushed the passes so well. But don't you have to take into, into account every single game within your packaging and your sub-packaging the fact that, you know what, a, a team just might have a good day against you and you might have to adjust on the fly instead of just relying on the pure talent, that you might have to run some TE and some ET stunts and some tackle twists and, and bring some delayed blitzes and show, show pressure from one side and drop out. You know, is that not in your arsenal? Is, is that not your responsibility as the defense coordinator to be able to adjust on the fly in the biggest game of the season? Well, sure. I mean, Jonathan's going to take heat, but I think everyone looks at it. And, it, you know, you know, Seth, halftime adjustments are kind of overrated. You got to adjust from, you know, series to series. But, exactly. you know, they were generating pressure in the first half. You know, they weren't getting sacks, but they were generating pressure. So, you know, if you're not only Jonathan Gannon, but if you're, you know, Big Bangio Consulting, if you're uh, uh, Jeremiah Washburn, if you're Tracy Rocker, you're saying, all right, keep doing what you're doing. You're, you're killing it. Game should have been 24-7 at halftime. So, I, I you know, should there have been a sense of urgency maybe in the last five minutes of the game? Yeah, I guess you can argue that. But w one of the things that also played into it was the running game. I mean, you know, Kansas City was running the football as well. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, if you look at his final numbers, they weren't great. You know, Jalen Hurts threw for more yardage. He didn't throw for a ton of yardage. The most disappointing part of all was the run defense and the fact that they were getting gashed in big spots. And I didn't expect that. I really didn't, and, and, uh, especially in the second half with Andy Reid, you know, facing a deficit. So that, to me, was even more disappointing. Hey, John, the stats show the Eagles ran for a buck 15, average under four yards to carry. The bulk of those yards coming on the legs of Jalen Hurts, who has 70 yards rushing. What happened to the other, the overall rushing game, the, th the trio of running backs in the backfield, number one? And number two, was there any mention after the game whether the hand was bothering Miles Sanders? I was told shortly after he got injured it was a hand injury. And yeah. was there any Miles talk about that? Miles did not play well. No. Miles no. did not play well from that first play. was inside zone. He kicked it outside like old school Miles yep. Sanders that we used to – Criticized and he got hurt on that play, and all of a sudden, you know, Kenny Gainwell, Boston Scott are in there. But yeah, if you and that plays into my point, uh, D Gun. So one fifteen, what? Yeah, one fifteen for the Eagles, one fifty eight for Kansas City. Who had that? Uh, so, you know, especially in the second half, again, Pacheco, Mahomes uh, ran the football very, very well despite his ankle sprain. McKinnon. Four carries for 34 yards. Four carries for 34 yards. The Eagles didn't tackle well, didn't communicate well. Yeah, the, the field was an issue. But as I said, both teams had to play on that field. Uh, Hassan said he changed his his spikes uh, because it was so slippery. But both teams had to play on that field. So I, I can't put too much on it. I put more on the fact that Look, this was the second best defense in the NFL during the regular season. They didn't play like the second best defense in the NFL in the Super Bowl. No. John, I, second I'll, half, second half of the Super Bowl. I, I'll I'll say this, you know, when the, the the Chiefs struggled through the first half, I think we all had to know that the adjustment was going to be for the Chiefs to come out and try to establish the run to alleviate, you know. The issue of not being yeah, but is that, that Seth, is it with with Andy Reid? Are we expecting Andy to establish the run? Oh, the new Andy, yeah. The new nah. Andy. And hey, listen, he's he, he won his second his second Super Bowl. I mean, if you go back and you look, you know, since his since the time that they've gone to four Super Bowls in the last or, or three Super Bowls in the last four or five years, you can go on, you can statistically look 
at how Andy Reid has changed and how he's looked at, you know, the game in a much different way, especially this year when you get rid of, you know, Tyreek Hill in a, in a trade, you know, obviously you don't have the deep threat down the field. So the mentality is we want to systematically move the ball down the field. That entails having to be able to run the ball. The Eagles did a very good job against Kansas City running the ball. They ran it seven times for 39 yards in the first half, and then they came out and just went ballistic in the second half, you know, running the football. So if, if the thing I admire about Andy at this point in his career, John, is the fact that when something's not working, he will make the change. Where when he was here, he just stuck to his guns. We're going to throw the football. We're just going to keep throwing the football. Yeah, but I will say, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, 5,200 yards passing whatever Patrick Mahomes had. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they don't they don't have Tyreek Kill, but they went about it a different way. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, Travis Kelsey, seven straight 1,000-yard seasons, 1,300 yards for a tight end, which is unbelievable. Uh, I mentioned Smith Schuster was wide open all the time. And then the two touchdowns, just the design of those two plays and guys being wide open, that's what I think about Andy Reid. Andy Reid is the best, you know, play schemer, play caller, big spot, getting guys wide open, rub routes. You know, we think about the Eagles all, all year. Nick Sirianni's done a great job. Shane Steichen's going to be a head coach in Indianapolis. Great coaching staff. Well, man, how many times have we said over the past few years, Eagles get called for OPI, they can't run these rub routes. Andy's teams, they're spectacular at it. Spectacular. And, you know, they understand what you can get away with, what you can't get away with. And then you see these guys wide open in the red zone. You're saying, what's going on? I mean, yet you, at, at some point you do have to tip your cap to the other team. I mean, we're talking about one of the greatest coaches of all time, and we're talking about a quarterback who started for five seasons now. He's been the five AFC championship games, so that's his floor. He's been to four Super Bowls. He's been he's won two so excuse me, three. He's won two. He's won two MVPs. This is already a Hall of Fame quarterback through five seasons. And I talked to Jason Cole last week, who's a Hall of Fame selector, and he said, yeah, I'd vote for him right now if he never threw another pass in the NFL. That's how good Patrick Mahomes is. John, listen, uh, it's been a great year, and uh, we really enjoyed uh, having you hang out with us. Uh, it, 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 you know, I, it, we tried to kind of look ahead at, at what the Eagles are right now, and they – They've got a lot of free agents. They have the P so, like, what does this do to them as far as their progress? Can we expect this team to still be that contender to maybe come back next year? It's going to be difficult to have a year like this. And that I still say, guys, after this loss, I still say this is the best Eagles team in the Super Bowl era. I still say that. They will never be regarded as that because they bailed on the biggest stage. But I still say this is the best all-around team they've ever had in the Super Bowl era. And they didn't get it done. And it gets more tougher. You're losing your offensive coordinator. You're losing your defensive coordinator. You're probably going to lose a few other assistant coaches. You can't bring these players back. I would be shocked if Miles Sanders is back next year. I would be shocked if James Bradbury's back. They just aren't going to be able to afford these players. And then you have the Jalen Hurts extension, who Jeffrey Lurie said earlier this week, he's got nothing left to prove. If he did, he proved it again in the Super Bowl. Had a spectacular game. Joe Banner, you say what you want about Joe, but, but he knows finances in the NFL. He put the number for Jalen Hurts contract extension at between 47 and $52 million average annual value. The Eagles will have to build this team a different way moving forward so it gets tougher from here and they had a great opportunity and they didn't finish the deal and it's disappointing john listen thanks a lot uh again we we love having you on the show we appreciate it and uh i guess we'll talk to you next year 
<laughs> Thanks, guys. It's been a great year. Pleasure, I know people John. don't want to yes, hear it, but a great John. season. All yep. right, John. Thank you so you, much. John. Uh, all right, let's take a break, and uh, we'll put a wrap on this show. The Eagles lose the Super Bowl 38-35, and what he just said is kind of ominous. When you get there, you always want to clinch the deal because you never know what's going to happen in the future. And uh, he just painted out a, a picture where they could lose uh, coaches and personnel. It is the uh, Pond La Hockey Eagles postgame show. We're back to wrap it up after this. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. Post Game Show with Seth Joyner. I knew that they had a running game. Derek Gunn. He has put in the effort. Devin Caney. Had we not won the Super Bowl, what would we be saying? And Mike Missanelli. Well, you know how Philly is. Post Game, now streaming on the 6ABC family of apps. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Since 1977, it's always been about you, the community, at Rafferty Subaru. And through the Subaru Love Promise, we prove we care by supporting charities like So Good Now. So Good Now helps kids in under-resourced areas by connecting them with student athletes to serve as mentors. We remove barriers so athletes can help youth in the corners of our communities where light and love are needed most. When you choose Rafferty Subaru, you help organizations like So Good Now. It's all about you at Rafferty Subaru. Action News, celebrating 50 years with AccuWeather. If you think severe weather has been on the rise, you are correct. In the last three years, tornado warnings in our region have shattered records. With 52 last year alone, half of those warnings resulted in confirmed tornadoes, including two extremely rare EF3s. Thanks for always trusting us to keep you informed. 50 Years of AccuWeather is sponsored by Independence Blue Cross. Choose coverage you can count on with the region's strongest network. Score and save at Southeastern PA in Delaware with Colony Pools this football season. And let the experts close your pool with a custom Merlin safety cover in green for the birds. And if you join our winter watch team, we'll give you another 20% off and Colony Pools will handle it all. Keep your tiles on your pool, not in your pool. Fly with Colony right now, birds fans. Visit flywithcolony.com. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. All right, uh, welcome back to the Pond La Hockey. Uh, 
Eagles postgame show, uh, 38 to 35. You know, we, we've been doing this show all year long, and uh, the season that kind of grew on us. I mean, we looked at the season as a, a season we did not expect, and all of a sudden it became the best team in the NFC. And, and going into this game, everybody was confident they were going to win this Super Bowl. And because they lost, they probably shouldn't erase. Uh, I mean, McMullen said it. This is the best Eagles team I've seen, and, and we've been through a lot of seasons. So it's really hard to process right now uh, how, how you're supposed to feel about this. They lose the game. They get to the Super Bowl. They were expected to win the game, and it's just disappointing and devastating. And I, I just wonder, from you guys' standpoint, where, where is this team now? Because, you know, McMullen made a great point, and we didn't even throw in that Jason Kelsey might not be part of it next year. So they're going to lose some personnel and have to retool. Can, can they get back up that hill? I think when you look at the state of the NFC right now, uh, and there's really no dominant team in the NFC, I think they have as good a chance as anybody. For the most part, the office is intact. They're going to really have to do some soul searching and decide what they want to do with their defense. You don't lose that many players at one particular time and expect to just replace them right away. Now, we understand they do have two first-round draft picks, one of them being in the top ten. I'd be surprised if they don't use that first pick in the first round to address the defense in, in some fashion. It's the revolving door in the NFL, Mike, as we know. Nothing stays the same and everything changes every year. And when you start paying a quarterback the kind of money that Jalen Hurts, somewhere else on the team has to suffer. To what degree, we don't know, but we know how he is the best at what he does in terms of working the cap to its favor. It's going to start with asking veteran players to restructure contracts. Now, Lane Johnson has done that twice for him already. I wouldn't be surprised if he does it again. Brandon Graham's going to take a family discount to come back because that's how much he wants to stay here. Beyond that, you got a whole lot of guys, even though they failed in this Super Bowl, you got a whole lot of guys that just enhanced their brand to get some serious money on the open market. So it's going to be tough, but I expect this, the nucleus of this team to put them right back in the playoffs again. I like where they sit from an offensive perspective, and God knows I hope that Jason Kelsey comes back and plays at least one more season with this team. Um, I like where they are. Um, defensively, you know, is going to be the question mark. I, offensively, I, I still think a third wide receiver that can be a difference maker in the slot um, or outside, wherever they need him to be, a speed guy that can stretch the field but also catch the ball, right. you know, and, and catch those contested balls is important. Um, I don't see Miles Sanders coming back. So I think that they're going to have to address the running back position because as great as Kenny Gainwell has played, I don't think he's durable enough to be the every down back. They need a, 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 a guy, you know, with some speed and a guy with a little bit of size, um, you know, for what they like to do. Defensively, wow. You know, the most important guy, in my opinion, that you got to bring back is you got to figure out how to get Chauncey Gardner-Johnson re-signed. I think he's a major yeah. difference maker. I think that the other, you know, safety spots were pretty good. Um, as much as I love James Bradbury, you know, you got to get younger back there. You got to start developing some players, and that's important. I think that Kazir White doesn't come back because, you know, you've drafted um, N'Kobe Dean to be the guy, but you better go and get some depth, um, you know, if you need that third guy there. Um, gosh, when you, you, you think about pass rush, you know, Sam Reddick is going to be there. Josh Sweat is going to be there. Um, you know, Milton Williams is going to have to take on a bigger, he's going to have to take a major step next year. Jordan Davis is going to have to take a major step next year. You know, can you figure out a way to, um, you know, figure out a way to, to get Javon Hargrave to come back or somebody going to outprice you? you know, for his services. You, you know, he's another one of those guys I think, Mike, that you let him go and shop himself and come back, you know, with his, with, with the best offer. Um, th there's going to be a lot of changes, you know, on this roster. But no one believed that this team could get to where they got to this year. No one believed that this defense could be as good as they were this year. If Howie can go back into his bag again, there's, a, there's always going to be some guys that fall through the cracks that you're able to pick up you know, latent free agency. Guys that, you know, are sitting at home on their couch in training camp, just hungry for a job. 
or a guy two, three weeks into a season when the team is, you know, two or three and oh again, and it's like, uh oh, they're on the run again. Those guys you can you can bring in, you know, on one year deals. So all is not lost. It's gonna be a harder task, you know, and if you lose Shane Steichen and you lose Jonathan Gannon, now you're implementing a whole different defense and who's gonna be your defense coordinator and what type of defense is he gonna run? Does 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 Nick Sirianni like the type of defense that 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 that, that, um, that Jonathan Gannon runs, or does he like a more aggressive style? And because he's his guy, he went to bat for him and would would, would do nothing other than go to bat for him all season long. So th there's a lot of questions, you know. But one thing we know is that you know the Magic Man Harry Roseman, he's going to be doing everything he can to get us right back in his position again next and here's year. And the other thing we know. They've got a franchise quarterback. Yeah. Which Absolutely. Which is tremendously important, and you don't have to think about that anymore. So everything's going to revolve off of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know what? That leads perfectly into what I'm going to say as my closing statement here on this season. Uh, and it's been such a pleasure to work with you guys. And I also want to shout out Mark's Jewelers for hooking me up with this awesome bling every single Sunday. Uh, Jalen Hurts is our quarterback, and he deserves to get paid, and he will get paid. And if anyone can figure out the salary situation, it's Howie Roseman, who is a magician uh, when it comes to everything, a player and rosters and, and salary cap. Uh, Jalen Hurts, though, he even had a quote. I know I mentioned it earlier in this show that if any quarterback will use this, any player will use this to just fuel himself to get even better than he played this season, which is hard to imagine because he was arguably the MVP until he went out with injury. He said, you either win or you learn. And he's yeah. going to learn and get better. The quarterback is the most important thing. A couple of people we need to thank is, of course, uh, uh, Sam Pond and Jerry Lahaki and uh, Tom Giordano from uh, our title sponsor, Pond Lahaki uh, people. And, you know, 23 uh, weeks ago it was. Where we sat down at Davio's and had a nice dinner and, got, wow. and started this whole thing. And, yeah. That's you know, crazy when, that it when our producer, yeah, it was a fun night. Uh, and Joe Krause put together this that he approached to all of us. I said, man, this is, I, I would love to work with these people. These guys have been fantastic all year. And, uh, it was a pleasure to work with you guys, but also the people that, that listen to this show uh, all year long. We really appreciate it. Uh, this is a streaming show, and we, you know, sometimes you don't know how they, those things uh, yeah, work, but uh, we got uh, great feedback on this show, and, and it's all because of the people that, that listen to the show, that watch the show, that kept replaying the show. So uh, I, I had a great time with you guys, and I appreciate uh, everybody here. I, I have to second that motion. Um, I love the fact that you have uh, opinionated people, passionate people about what we discussed. I've never had a chance to work with you. I've worked with Seth, but he was usually in the studio, and I was out in the field. Uh, worked with Devin last year. We did it from home, from yeah, our homes well, last year. Yeah, slightly different this year. But when, when, when Joe approached me about putting together this group of people, and, of course, Mark Farzetta, who I've worked with a long time, I said it's a slam dunk. You know, it's, it's a slam dunk because you won't have robots and drones. You let people that are generate conversation and controversy along the way. And what I loved the most was Egg and Seth, Seth on every chance I got. And trying to get under, <laughs> under your skin. And it got to a point, Mike, we said, I know what you guys are trying to do to me. And we still would get them every now and then. But... Um, I, liked, I, just I like getting it uh, going between the three of you guys. And mainly, actually, it was more like <laughs> Seth and Mike, I felt like, right, we always right. going to have the... Hey, hey Devin, the I would just go like this. <laughs> right. Deacon and I would both kind of sit back and just watch you guys. But it, it's, it's been, been a pleasure, It's though. been my pleasure to work with, uh, with the professionals. And, and you know what? Let us not forget, Ocean Casino, my goodness. Um, they rolled out the red carpet for us. The hotel rooms, the food, everything that we've needed, and then some above and beyond the call of duty so i can't thank ocean casino enough as well and of course the, the ceo joe kraus for coming yeah, up with this concept and doing it here he, he was you the know? man and as far as i know none of us are free agents so we're going to be back with the show next year oh, right? no, i'm a free agent we're, in april oh you're free agent i'm free agent oh, okay. oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm right. a free. well <laughs> our goal is to be back with you guys next year what? right seth right you haven't had enough of me I'm a free agent <laughs> in april i'm a free agent we got to talk <laughs> Oh, Lord. Seth, mercy. you haven't had enough of me this year, right? Listen, you, man, I've had enough of all of y'all. Okay? <laughs> Wait a minute. 20, I, I didn't even me? realize I didn't even realize it's been 23 weeks since we had the dinner. Yeah. Okay? Can I don't want to see y'all's faces. <laughs> I don't want to see uh, y'all's faces until draft night, okay? Really? Yes. All I want to see right now oh. is sunshine, salt water, yeah. and sand. Devin? Y'all can have everything else. You'll get barbecue. 
You'll get barbecue. I'll get barbecue. This is the you first nothing, time you've ever coming. said that to me. Listen, That's I'm, do I look like I need me. barbecue? <laughs> Devin, Devin, I hate Keep to tell, it. I hate to tell you this, Devin. You know how many people I told are going to get barbecue? <laughs> I still haven't gotten the form oh, yet. See, I'm sorry. You know see you, now, now you understand it's why. It's progress, though, because usually I just, like, get a hard no from you. Now you understand why I said what I said. You ain't getting no damn barbecue. Trust me. I've been trying to get barbecue for the last 10 years. Oh, did you see those the ribs past, I made past, last night? Uh, yeah, I sure did, Woo. Deacon. Didn't bring them and, here and today. Of course, Devin said, uh, you bringing them to AC with you? I said, uh, uh. So I texted my family. I show up with hoagies. I, I you bring did. food. Oh, and, those trade hoagies are like, on yeah. point. Yeah, they are, Gordy. Uh, shout out Fink's Hoagies. Yeah, my car smelling like this. mesquite wood the whole way, and all my clothing smelling like <laughs> mesquite wood. I can't. I, I, okay, hey, thanks so much, everybody, for listening <laughs> out there and watching the show. We, uh, it we was a hell of a bed. run, man. The Eagle season was a hell of a run, and uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. So thanks for coming along for the ride, right? Absolutely. Uh, everybody have a great off season, and uh, we're going to come right back at you next year. Thanks, Go everybody. Birds. Go Birds. Go Birds. Take care. At Pond Lee Hockey, we've recovered billions of dollars for our clients, and we're confident we can do the same for you. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, we've helped over 100,000 injured clients obtain some of the largest settlements in Pennsylvania. One conversation is all it takes to help you and your family get back on track. If you've been injured in an accident, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. Weather forecasting is a team game. We rely on each other every day, updating the models and passing along new critical information. We have a team of five experienced meteorologists and a specialized weather producer, Paul. Say hi, Paul. Sometimes what I see in the model, Cecily could see something different. That's when we come together as a team to make our most accurate prediction. And all of this backed by more than 100 AccuWeather scientists. It's a team game. And we have the best team in town. Go passionately, go fearlessly, go confidently. Go birds! <clears throat> go confidently towards your goals with First Trust, Philly's hometown bank for nearly 90 years and the official bank of the Philadelphia Eagles. We're focused on getting you over the goal line. So go with conviction, go with trust. Go birds! And go forward with us by your side. First Trust Bank, the official bank of Philadelphia dreams. Oh, and go birds. Why do millions of people every year from around the world visit Philly's Rocky statue? You want to tell me the sky is burgundy with green stripes and yellow polka dots? I'll meet you on that. But you're never going to convince me Rocky is anything other than the pure greatness that it is. Never going to happen. Join me, Paul Farber, for WHYY's The Statue. We're going on a journey to explore the biography of the Rocky statue. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. Celebrating the life of your loved one is what we do at Life Celebrations by Givenish. My son Kellen was a lively, vivacious, and sassy child. At the age of four and a half, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor, and he had a very short battle of only 10 months before he lost his life. Life Celebrations by Givenish, customizing services as unique as the individual. I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew that I wanted to celebrate the life of my five-year-old. And knowing his personality and knowing who he was at the core, that had to be something special. Turning tragedy into a celebration of life, no matter how hard, is what we do at Life Celebrations by Givenish. Life Celebrations by Givenish, customizing services as unique as the individual. 
Since 1977 at Rafferty Subaru, we have always been about our customers and the community. Early on, a safe and durable option, we've evolved to become the best overall brand according to Kelly Blue Book. Over the last 14 years, we've donated thousands of dollars through the Subaru Share the Love event and found homes for hundreds of pets. The Rafferty family is proud of our 45 years in business. This month, celebrate our anniversary with special financing on select models. Visit us and see why.